Hello and welcome to the London Something podcast with myself, DJ Ron, and thank you in advance for joining us today. Thanks to those of you who have liked, commented, shared and subscribed. We really appreciate your support, as by doing so it helps our channel grow and reach so many more people. A special shout out to our sponsor, West End DJ, who with their continued support, help us provide more of these episodes documenting the culture of jungle and drum and bass. Check out the link below and get their special discount for the best in DJ equipment for all your needs. In this very first episode of 2024, our next guest compared with some of our previous episodes may be regarded as one of the new guard of drum and bass as one of the biggest new school artists playing some of the biggest shows in the UK and abroad. Trust me, his story is equally compelling to any you've heard on this podcast. From his exponential growth, personal tragedy, and the founding of the What's On Your Mind charity supporting mental health in the music industry, please welcome my friend, the very talented DJ Turner. We saying to you, okay, bro? Yes, brother. How you doing, bro? Yeah, love being Turner. Big up. Uh, thanks saying, for good? joining us. No, mate. no you know worries. I mean? Thanks yeah, for inviting me. I know you've got man. a very, very busy schedule, but I also know that you're a, f a fan of the podcast. So, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, definitely, man. I've watched a fair few of them. Yeah, so, so yeah. A lot of my mates have as well. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite surreal to be here. There'll be guests that are um, <laughs> on the podcast. Still. So I appreciate you coming through, man. Oh, good, man. You'd have known by watching yeah. how we kind of like go through this. This is mostly about the artist's life rather than their the careers. Career, yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, I want to know some bits about your careers as well because <laughs> you kind of like just, for me anyway, it seemed like you just turned up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. I yeah, yeah. But, 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 but before we get to that, I'd yeah. just like to kind of like go back to sort of like your earliest memories and, and um, you know, like who is Turno? Who is Turno? Well, do you know what? Like, I'm, I've been into music from early, like from early. My dad was in a band uh, like called Rio, which is like a cover band, but like Italian kind of cover band. They used to go hey, are you Italian? Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, I'm Italian, 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 Italian right. yeah. Francesco Moliterno is my government name. Okay, right. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, my dad, my dad was in a band, so I was always influenced with music and stuff. I played like the cello, funnily enough. Which oh, is really? Mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I pretty okay. much looked like it, to be fair, because I was, I was quite a fat child. <laughs> so, oh, really? So yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah. So I played the cello as a kid. I played the piano, the keyboard. So I was definitely into music and that man, but um. Yeah, it was more just like a little bit of a hobby. Uh, I didn't really kind of see it, see it as a profession as such. And then, to be honest, man, it was when I when I was in school and I had to choose my my performing art. Um, I think it was the nine or something. I think it is. And I actually wanted to do art, but like they, they there was no space left. All he had was music technology. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. And that's kind of where like the the proper um, love for it kind of started, I guess. Mm. Like. I think prior to that, I had someone come down from, someone moved down from London, actually, that's what it was, and he had, he was playing D&B on his Walkman on the bus. Mm. I think that's when I first, like, clocked, mm. yeah, drum and bass, and right. I started to get interested in, what's, what are you listening to? What's this jungle D&B thing I listen to? And then yeah. I think, off the back of that, he had Dex, and then yeah, the, 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 yeah. kind of, that's where the, that's where the, 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 the love, I suppose, for D&B, and, like, kind of actively wanting to be, like, mm. in the scene and start digging down this rabbit hole, like, mm. started, I'd say, so what was that, about about 12, 13, so yeah, yeah 15, 15, 16 years. Were you, were you born in this country? Yeah, yeah, I'm born, born in this country, here, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically my, my, um, my nonna and nonna, which is my grandparents and my dad's so on, my dad's mum and dad, they moved over from Italy, I think in the 60s or 70s. Um, there was like a, like Bedford's basically got one of the biggest Italian, Italian populations in, in England. Uh, uh, it's, they had like a brickworks, which a lot of like the, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, Italians come over from Italy to, to, to work in, and that was in Bedford. And then my nonna, there was like a big, like, I think she was like a, was it a seamstress? Is that what they called someone that yeah, sews yeah, and that? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they moved over from then. My dad was born in England. Um, but like I said, there was a massive Italian population. There still is, like, really. But from from early, like, there, there's been a lot of Italians. So it kind of felt like a second home to them, really. Like, well, like my nonna and nonna didn't really speak that much English, to be honest with you. Mm. Like, even though they'd lived here for like 50, 70, 50, 50, 60 years, like, they spoke like this broken English, like, which is like a little bit of Italian and English. They can get themselves by, but I could, uh, I could talk in front of them. I could, I could order a drawer in front of them and they wouldn't even know, like, do you know what yeah. I mean? So, so, so they yeah, it was quite broken English, but they, um, they've been here from the 60s, 70s. You said and... your dad was born here. I met your dad the other night, yeah. what a lovely guy. That was mad. How old, how old is your dad? Uh, he is... I hope he doesn't mind me asking. No, 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 that's cool. He's 60 something. I think he's 63 or four. Right, that's interesting because, um, because being born here as an Italian, mm. he's more English, I'd imagine, than he is Italian. Well, 
you know what? He would hate you saying that. I can't lie. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> only, only because, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. What's he, his name again? He told me. Gaidano, yeah. Guy, that, he's basically, it, he's basically yeah, yeah. guy, but it's yeah, yeah. Italian guy. He did say to and me. That's my yeah. middle name, like, yeah. as well. So, but yeah, I mean, he speaks fluent Italian. Like, again, it's kind of like this, it's weird. Like, I think when, when you live in England um, uh, for quite a while, you get this kind of weird slang. Like, it's like Italian English slang where, like, you'll say, you say certain words in English in a, in a sentence, but he's still speaking Italian. A lot of Italians, when we go over there, they're like, you're speaking like some mad dialect, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, chatting, like, but they, um, yeah, he's, he's fluent. Like he's, he definitely, definitely classed himself as an Italian. Like he's quite, he's quite well known in, in my area in, in Bedford as well. Like because um, he's, he's got an insurance company which he's had from from years. So obviously, as you can imagine, he insured all the Italians. Like my uncle, uh, God rest his soul. Like he, he had a mortgage company downstairs. So they kind of merged. They, they basically looked after a lot of the community in, in Bedford. In it, like it seemed to be that way back in the day. Like um, especially for. Italians, like, um, to be fair, m m most, like, minority cultures, like, they, they all kind of stick together, kind of, you know what I mean? They help each other out, they look after each other, etc. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was kind of their role. But, yeah, he was a hard-working dude, man. That's, yeah. that's kind of where I got my, I think, my... Um, Ethic. Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. man. I'll get into that, actually, because that was one of the things that I saw about you with regards to your work ethic, just in very... Just during the pandemic, actually, and um, which made me go, you know what? I like I like things like that. Yeah. I know I like people like that. I like people that put the work in. Mm. But yes, yeah, and it's also very interesting just to stay with your parents at the moment, or certainly your dad. You know, like and the community. Yeah, yeah. That a I didn't know that Bed Bedford had that strong Italian yeah, community. Yeah, man, massive. And also to note that he serviced them in that way. I'd imagine that for you led for you to have relatively a decent childhood. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll be real, like. Obviously, my mum and dad, that was my mum the other night you met, by the way, that was my stepmom, but um, my actual mum and dad uh, haven't been together for yeah, absolutely young. So they stayed together for for me and my brother, but yeah, they, they, I've, I've never looked at them like, oh, they're, they're, they're a normal kind of husband and wife, like mm. they never really showed affection, etc. Like It was not really that kind of relationship. But um, yeah, so you're right, yeah, to be honest, my dad was a hard worker, like I say, he set up the business, he didn't have any qualifications from school, so, and he was similar to me, he was quite a creative, like he was actually quite good at art, and he played, like I say, he played musical instruments, etc. as well, he was really good on keys actually, but yeah, so that, that work ethic got him where he was today, and I think that was a massive kind of uh, inspiration for me, but yeah, growing up, yeah, we did have, we did have a, um, yeah, we did, we did have quite a, quite a privileged um, kind of upbringing, I guess, yeah. but it was kind of scorned by the relationship between your mum and my dad, really, if I'm honest with you. Like, mm. it was very, we, we were very young. My brother took it really hard, to be honest with you. I did, but I kind of just got on with it. Like, I kind and of how knew. old were you at that time? He was six, so I must have been eight, man. So it was And you remember it that well, sure, yeah? Um, yeah, do you know what, man? It's crazy, yeah, I do. I, I, mem I remember, I don't know, it just, it's weird. It felt normal to us because, obviously, uh, but just little things, like, I don't know, like, they, just, they wouldn't kiss or they wouldn't, like, cuddle or, or, or whatever. But as a kid, you kind of... I don't know, you understood it, but you didn't really like, you didn't really want to pry too much into it. Interesting, and that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. But um, mm. I know they just stayed together for us. Like, that's, that's pretty much mm. what it was. Then they got to the stage where my mum was just like, look, I'm not happy anymore. And she made the conscious decision to, um, mm. to leave, which was fair enough. And then we, we kind of, me and my brother went to my mum's. Uh, we lived with her and we did two weeks there and two weeks at my dad's, like, which was hard because my dad, my dad had remarried my stepmom's got three kids. We didn't really get on with them to start with, I'll be honest. Like, they won't mind me saying this because we do now, but like, they were kind of similar. Like, like my stepmom, Debbie, is quite wealthy. She's quite, she's quite successful, sorry. She's got a couple of nurseries. So she's done, she's doing, she's done pretty well for us. So, yeah, they, they got married. We didn't really get on with the kids too much because we, they were just different, just different dynamics. Like, um, me, me and my, uh, me and my brother were very close. Like, whereas it, it felt like they, them three kind of were a bit bickery of each other. And that's how me and Fabio used to be, to be honest with you, back mm, in the day. But, mm. Yeah, so we, we the dynamic was a bit was a bit we were hard dynamic to get through. So that's why we did the two week thing at my dad's and my mum's, but it didn't really last because like it was just too hectic there. There was too many personalities. It was just hard to like kind of we were all at an age as well. We were just trying to find ourselves like kind of I don't know four how old was I sixteen eighteen around that kind of area around that kind of time. So yeah, it was it was quite a lot of uh, um, bit of a dynamic too much going on in there, man. So mm. eventually we just kind of done the. Stayed at my mum's. Full time? Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think I still went there a lot. Like, I, in my dad's, my dad's got a building <coughs> where, he does, where he's got his insurance company. He owns the building and I've got a studio in there. So I've been in there for like, since I started my career, to be honest with you, which is, 
I don't know, probably started making tunes about 20 years ago now. So that's how long I've been in that room and that's how long he's had the, he's had the building for years. But like, he supported me from then. Like, I mean, they, they both have, to be honest with you. Both my parents, like, like thankfully, like, they saw what I what I was in love with and they kind of supported it. Mm. Even though, really, my dad wanted me just to take over with the business of what he'd built. But, and I've worked for him for, for years, like, but it just wasn't me, do you know what I mean? I, di I didn't like the, the repetitiveness of the same stuff every day. I didn't also really want to be like a shadow under him. I wanted to have my own legacy, do you know what I'm saying? And to be honest, like I say, a lot of, a lot of people would have gone like, well, that's the easy route to do that one, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? You've got, you've got companies to look after, you're guaranteed like success potentially, like, so it's a lot more easier to say that route. But yeah. for me, it wasn't me. And that's why I respect the fact like fully that they both supported me because I know, I know at that age, a lot of, people, a lot of parents were like, "Oh, it's a phase." That's what they was, That's what I thought they were going to say. It's a phase. Like, mm. it's supposed to be a DJ for a beat. He's not going to do anything. And I think a lot of people kind of see it, see it like that as well. When you first start, and you say, "I'm a DJ," yeah, right, man. Not until yeah. you start bringing home the checks. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. When you start bringing home the checks, that's when it's like, "Oh, right." Yeah, you do yeah. something serious. Oh, you play, play, play down the local <laughs> pub every week. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do, mate. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's it kind of takes takes a while to kind of take it seriously. But like I say, without their support. Like both of them, to be fair, man. Like my dad for giving me the platform to obviously, um, yeah, have a room in 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 the building, which I could obviously have a proper. Cause that way, I was away from my home as well. Like, and I could actually, actually had a, a, like a studio. I got it professionally, kind of acoustically treated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. And that was that was that was really helpful. So that was that was massive for me. And my mum has always supported me. Like I say, she always has been. She's she's like my, one of my biggest my biggest mm -hmm. fan, man. She constantly watches my Insta stories. <laughs> so 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 you were saying that you 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 felt. Or not, you felt that it was a fact that you were quite privileged by the fact of like the work that your old yeah, man had put into definitely, serving man. the community. In, reg in regards to how I was brought up, like I, I went to private school um, for my mum. We both did actually as kids. Then, then, then I went to Bedford Private School, which was an all boys school. Which I, I'm so glad I got out of that because I think I really think that's unhealthy to be with one sex. Like, and when, 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 when did that? Um, when you say got out of that, well, did you come out of it early? Or? Yeah, so basically, my mum and dad finally got split up, and then that's when that's when I got taken out of private school and we put into normal state school. Why was the reason behind that then? Just what, by taken out, just, yeah. the, just the finances, I think. I think okay, I think, yeah, got just, you. Got you. Yeah, a lot yeah, more expensive, yeah, yeah. And, and there was obviously squabbling between, you know. Okay, like, yeah, I understand. So yeah, it got easier. And to be honest, bro, I, I'm kind of glad, man, because like. I really did not, I didn't really have, to be honest, school for me wasn't really a, a, joy, a joyous. I was going to ask you. Yeah, that, yeah, it really wasn't. Man. I, 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 I was quite a butt as you. I'll be, I'll be pretty real. I'll be pretty real. <laughs> I've lost them a little bit now, but I was butters, mate. Like, I had the, the teeth and the, oh. and the, the side part that my mum used to do for me. Like, I'll get your was... old man to send me a picture and cut it in. <laughs> Trust me, man. You agree. <laughs> cut I'm, it I'm into happy the to, end. I'm happy to show the before and after, yeah, man. Yeah. If you want to get cut a little bit into the yeah. edit. <laughs> but yeah, I was quite a butt as you. So like, I, I didn't really have the Best, um, I don't know, man. I, I, I got, I kind of got bullied a bit, like for being, like, I was quite, I was quite overweight and 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 whatnot, and I just didn't have much confidence. Like Fabio, my brother, who obviously unfortunately passed away, like he. he, he he was the confident, like the the, the gallus, the, the guy everyone wanted to chat to, and I was like the kind of bigger brother, just like just the big ogre <laughs> under behind him, kind of like, can you talk to me? <laughs> so like he was a cool kind of hip one, always had the cool hair and the, the cool clothes and that, and the confidence and and whatnot. Um, um, and yeah, so yeah, school wasn't really really an enjoyable time for me until I went to college and I started to find myself a bit more because I think when I got taken out of that school environment. Because getting out of that boys' school for me, I think was like a massive, massive positive. Because the thing is, when I went to when I went to Linkoff, which was like the first state school, like I didn't even have to talk to a girl, man. I was like, I was like, fucking, I got, I used to go so red. I used to be so shy. I used yeah. to be, and I just think like, yeah, man, like it's, 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 it feels like a weird dynamic to put to put um, to have like an all, a, a same sex school. I don't know if that's controversial, but it's just how I feel. I just think it's just like, how are you gonna interact? How are you gonna learn to interact with the other sex? Like, especially from young as well. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? So I don't know. That's just my. That's that's, no, that's no, what they I were, felt. No, no, well in Hackney there was a there was an all boys school, uh, a couple. It took me quite a while anyway. I was quite a shy kid anyway, man. Like, it took me quite a while to like really blossom in, in school or really find my place. You know, you've got the smokers and you've got the, the cool kids and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it, felt, it felt, it was quite hard to find. But then also you and the new kids. Yeah, well. yeah, that as well, yeah, mate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I was a new kid. So um, yeah, it was tough. Like I said, I don't really have too many fond memories. Like I remember doing my GCSEs actually 
and um, my phone went off in the exam. <laughs> I know, I was, I was fucking screwing, man. <laughs> uh, and um, they let, they was right at the start as well, and they were like, they were like okay, it's okay, just do the exam. I've done the whole thing, man. At the mm. end of it, like, sorry, we have to fail you, man, because your phone went off. And no then, way! And went, in fact, I was like, bro, why didn't you no tell me how to start, you bastards? Like, yeah, really? so done, man. And the thing is, like, the, the, I, is that I, how they're yeah, running that, yeah? yeah? And I, ch I, check, I, check, I check the call list, like, Who's the, who called me? It's a private number. I was like, you fucker. <laughs> so if you're out there, man. <laughs> You ruined oh, my science no. exam. Shit. But yeah, so I, I got shit to each season. And even in music, I got an E in music, which is funny. But um, yeah, so I, I just didn't really get on with the school. I didn't like the homework, the school, the coursework stuff like the... So you weren't an academic? academic nah, man, sure. not at all. Yeah, I was yeah. definitely a creative, man, 100% yeah. all day. And, and I just, I was, I'm very fidgety, like, mm. as well. I always, I'm always, like, I don't know, playing with yeah, my yeah, ear yeah. or something yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I just can't sit still for too long. Um, so I think, like, just the thought of, like... I don't know, things like maths and like science and trying to really work out. Like that kind of stuff really like fries my brain. Now, yeah, thank God yeah. I've got management who deal with the admin side of things now. Yeah, but like yeah. that stuff used to re I used to feel stupid. Like looking at like a like I don't know, ten or fifteen receipts. I mm. used to like feel so stupid after. I'd have, like I would have to like go for go for like a walk and just clear my head because I couldn't do like the admin, then then mm. the creative. I had to like have a break and I like, reset my brain yeah, like, yeah, because yeah. it was just like too it's the regimentedness for me, which I don't like. I like the free yeah, the yeah. freedom to like move around and just like be creative with with it instead of just like you're just basically copying pasting something aren't you yeah. really like, it's very it's quite interesting actually because you're saying that and um i think my very first interaction with you was during the pandemic we were a part of which we still are part of this dj group which yeah oh that, yeah the music house the music yeah. house yeah. uh a whatsapp group which was formed by uh steve fantasy all the DJs were in there and whatever. And I just remember you kind of like teaching lessons and mm. and making uh I even called you for a lesson, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually I actually don't yeah. I don't remember with Zinc actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember, is it Ben? Is it yeah, Ben, ben that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I can't remember what happened, but I think you sent me a uh <laughs> you <laughs> also sent me like a CD of not a physical CD, but you created like some samples and sounds oh, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I bringing that up is because to me that registered to me as a certain level of organisation. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. To have to do that. So to hear you saying, actually, I didn't like being organised, you yeah. know, like, I didn't like doing yeah, that. Yeah, do you know, I did It sounds I did like I, two I, separate things. Yeah, you know? I had a team. I think, do you know what? That's one thing with me. I'm very, I'm very if I, when I get to survival mode, I'm like, yo, I've got to get on it. I'm, not, I'm like, right, let's do this, let's do this. Mm. this. I did, when the pandemic hit, like, because I, I, I've been teaching for quite a while, um, I was just doing private lessons. People were coming to my studio, and I was doing like uh, day days with them. And so it, was that place in Bedford then? Sorry yeah, to yeah. So that, that was in Bedford. That, that, that's 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 the basically the, the studio I'm in. Right. My, my okay. Dad, my dad's yeah, office, yeah. It looked so. like a front room. It looked like a really nice front room, and there was like a window over a, a high street. Oh, that's that is my house. Yeah. That's your place. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. mate. Oh, I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Because so I've got a little. I've got a little uh, set up at home. I've actually brought my studio home now, but I'll, okay. I'll get into that um, later. Yeah. Why I've done that, but. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, when it comes to survival mode, you just you just kick in. But I was, I was teaching before, and yeah, when lockdown hit, I, I was actually doing really well off it. It got to a stage where I had to like, went before lockdown, and I, I did the teaching thing. I I actually was 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 helping people so much that I didn't even want to make music myself. Like I was like, I don't want to make tune. I've, I've spent seven hours with this guy, like t telling him how to make a tune, like or showing him sorry and. Like, I don't want to get in the studio now. And I got to the point where I had to make that executive decision to go, bruv, I'm not ready to be a teacher yet full time. I want to, I still got music career to do. Like, mm. and that was before my second album. And I had to, I had to really dig deep and just go, right, cool. Let me just, uh, I have to park the bus for a minute and mm. just, uh, yeah, do, yeah, do the music thing. Cause it, the dynamic changed, man, for me. And that's where I put it to bed for a bit. And then, and then, yeah, lockdown hit. And I was like, raw, oh, okay, I need to make some money. Let's do this. Mm. Like, let's actually, Make this business work, and and it really again, it really popped off, and I was so busy with it mm. during lockdown. I remember like, I used to come to my, go to the studio. Obviously, you weren't meant to go out, were you, or anything? Mm. But um, it was it's only like two minutes from my house, so mm. yeah, I used to bike there, and then just uh, yeah, do less, do a couple of lessons, whatever. Mm. I come home, and it'll keep me ticking. It'll, it'll make me feel like I've got a purpose as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. And then from there, it just evolved into because uh, Jack Headex, he's got his uh, he had that, that 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 site by the producer, which is like a sample, like a Loop Masters kind of thing, but he had his own one. And yeah, we ended up, we ended up eventually cut a long story short. We 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 had a plat we invented a platform called Ethos, which is like a tutorial teaching platform. And then we joined forces with him um, to create this kind of merge of the brands. And it, it did really well, to be honest with you. Like it did really well. We had loads of artists. We it's still going now, to be fair. We, we had loads of artists kind of getting involved to record content. And it wasn't just necessarily 
videos about production, but I don't know, I had interviews with like Bridge and Inter or, or, or my agent or my manager at the time. And just like, just to get an insight into like their life, their career, I suppose to this to an extent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there was quite a lot of different kind of content. We had like a group on there as well, like a, um, and uh, a Discord channel where every every month we'd have like a kind of a mission we'd call it where you have to kind of the people on board had to like I don't know make a track with these spe specifications and then I would I would kind of like live I would record like a message and actually like uh, say who the winners are etc etc mm -hmm. so yeah I, I was in man I was fully in it kind of kept me sane through lockdown and and it was really good like, I could feel this thing building and I was like oh this is gonna go sick and then like I say when when we come out of lockdown unfortunately it's just like the priorities changed a little bit like it's still ticking over and I got to big up my team team for, for um, working with me on it and still looking after it now. But like I say, it comes to the point where, you know, you've got too many things going on. Like you're planting too many trees and like they're not already growing because you're focusing too many on too much on all of them rather yeah. than like the one thing that like you are here for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and then when yeah. you get to that point with that one thing you're here for, then mm. the opportunities will come to then be able to do all these things. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, man. That's, yeah. that's kind of what I realised. And I spoke to, I think it was actually Brucey, man. He told me, he was like, He's like, he's like, bro, because he had a really successful clothing label, mm. and he was he was just about to really blow, like, and he was like, mate, I had to, I couldn't do, I couldn't, I couldn't have like, all these these, yeah, it wasn't working for me, man, and it really made me think, and I remember him telling me that when we were in New Zealand, and I was like, mm. and then when I come back from New Zealand, I was like, look. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little step back from this because I just haven't got the energy or the time. It's making me feel like. Too I mean, it's much, a very man. kind of like brave thing to do because because. Um, you know, a lot of people would consider, oh, right, yeah, I've got a few things popping off here. And because I've got a few things popping off, I'm going to keep them popping off. Yeah. But then there is the school of thought that says, well, actually, perhaps if you let one of them go, I mean, the other thing really block. It's yeah, hard. It is. And, and that's why I say know it's what? brave to do it. It's because... hard, it's hard, because like I say, you f you're scared. But then for me, like I say, like, I, I, just, I, I just come to that point, I was like, look, you know what? Like, I'm not done with my with my DJ career. I haven't, I haven't even peaked yet. Like my, mm. my producing, etc. Like I'm my, that that side of my career. Like so, me putting all my energy into this, like it, that is going to suffer, man. Because I'm not going to I'm not going to make any, as many tunes. I'm not going to be a switched on. It was a very hands on job. When, when we were doing it, like fully, like, every, we we were full time of it. When it was lockdown, every, every single day we'd have a meeting, we'd have a Zoom meeting, us four, and we'd be going through things. We'd basically be at the desk for like four or five hours, just sort, sorting things out. There was a lot to do. So when that was when we had nothing to do as well. So when it all come back and we had gigs and all these other pressures that you almost forgot about, like the the pressures of the travelling and et cetera, et cetera, I was kind of like, yo, this this is this is too much, man. I can't I can't mm. physically and it got to the point where I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy. I was like, I was like, I, this is where I know I've got to make some changes because I'm not, mm. I'm not I don't want to do this. Like mm. I haven't got the energy, but I don't actually physically want to do it because I'm like, I'm looking at, oh, it's a bit of a chore, man. Mm. That's when I was like, look, that's not right. No, that's not right. I made I made the right decision. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, pull yeah, out yeah. of this, mm. keep it ticking, because mm. there's still there's still a number of people on the on the platform yeah, yeah, yeah. that signed up. No, and, I I I I recognize that in so much um just through other things in my own life yeah. where I've had to go, oh, you're screwing about you having to go in. Now. Yes. You're screwing about that. When you, you got them feelings. Like, you used to like going. Yeah. <laughs> and now and you're... Why, why is that? Why, yeah, why, why is that? that? Like, you know what? you just got to let When it's go. a chore... Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you know what? Go, this just goes on to like, what I said about my... St I've moved my studio home now because like mm. I've been in that room for like 20 years. like, mm. And it's a proper studio. Like, I've, got my, I've got all my synths. It's, it's nice in there. It's, 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 it's not too much... Bigger than this, it's probably smaller, but it's more long and narrow. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's just it's just a studio. It's not. Mm. There's no sofa. There's no like chill room. There's nothing. It's the, it's the room where you work, and that worked me for for many years. Like yeah. I love that. I'm going there whenever I want, make as much much noise as I want. Yeah, there's no problems at all. I'm there. I've got free parking. It's secure. Bang. Like all good. Like, I've been in that studio for like 15 years. Tried to. I just wasn't really inspired anymore in there anymore. I tried to make some changes, etc., ambient lighting, etc., move some things around, but it wasn't really working. And and it's not until recently that I went to. Um, I said to my manager, he's from Manchester. I was like, I was like, can you get me an Airbnb for the week? I just want to change. I want a little fresh. I broke up with my my missus quite soon, uh, soon around this time as well. So I was like, Look, I want to get out of this space. I want to go. I want to come away and just like be inspired in a new area. So yeah, he got me a he got me a, um, a gaff. Um, he's a he's a Man City fan as well. And I'm a Man United fan. He got me a fucking gaff right next to the Etihad, had the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you know, it was lovely and like mm. a lovely penthouse. It was beautiful. Like, I mean, I mean, it's a long way from Bedford. It is, yeah. It's two and a half hours. But I mean, like what we do every weekend, it's a minor. But uh. I don't know what it is about Manchester. Like, say, I, I just got this 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 fire in my belly that I 
when I go, whenever I go there, um, I don't know, man, what it is. I just, I just love it. I just love the people. I love the the, the vibe, the city, just just the energy there. And, and I also love just being kind of like a no, not a nobody, but just being like someone just fresh there. Do you know what I mean? I don't really know that many people there. It's quite, it's quite exciting. Like just not reinventing yourself, but just being like a, I don't know, being like a in a big city. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's nice. like, so um, yeah, like every time I've been there, I've got this kind of vibe, and I was just like, oh, I want to move. But anyway, when we, when he had when I had this gaff for the week, like I just got so much done, bro. I brought all my studio with me. I just sit up, I actually sat up on a the guy had like a pool table. I <laughs> sat up on the pool table downstairs, got a couple of chairs, made a makeshift studio, and yeah, man, I was off and I was there for like four days. I made like eight tunes, which was like for me really good, like for like that short space of time. And I was like, wow, that was really productive, man. Like, and I was up till, oh yeah, it's weird. I was up till like five in the morning, like just. Just buzzing off the music, man. Just like, just like, right, is that time to go to bed soon? Shit, like, mm. just in in the zone, man. Like differently, because like, I always used to be quite a morning person, like nine the nine till five studio life. But I found like the golden hours for me are now after midnight, man, because you don't get bothered, like, and almost like you just get this weird, like, in between sleepy kind of vibe where you don't really think too much about what you're doing. You just go with the the intuition of what's inside you, mm. and that really is. That is really a beautiful thing when it go when it when it goes right, and I just find that you sometimes we think about things so much when we're making a track, especially like I do anyway, and it just like you you change your mind before you've even done it. Like it's like just just let it flow. If it feels right, cool, do it. So yeah. So anyway, after going to Manchester a couple of times, I've been there twice now in the last month for a week, different gaffes, but yeah, and just like both times have been so productive. I was like, you know what, like. I might bring my studio home, like so. I'm in that environment because I kind of like the fact of being in the environment of, of um, yeah, having like a TV there in front of me, having a sofa there if I want to go and sit down for half an hour, go next door and make some food, like. Whereas in my in my studio, if I want to do anything but work, I have to leave, like. I mean, there's no there's no room to do anything. It's quite mm. cluttered in there as well mm. in the back room. So it's not very uh, it's not a very like ha uh, happy place for me at the moment. So I was like, you know what? Let me make a decision and move some stuff back back home. And I've got a little table in my in my living room actually, which is just a, kit, just a little kind of eating table. Not that I ever did or eat of it, but and that's kind of like right in right in the corner. And I just sat up there, and then I've been there for like two weeks now, and like it's just been crazy. The levels of the different levels of um, inspiration I've had, and just like the fact that I I'm working a lot more. Where before, if I was at home and it was like ten o'clock, and I'm like, I really should go to the studio. And I'm like. Oh, can I be asked to go there? Like, mm. And that's quite a shit feeling to have when you yeah, know yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's something you love doing. Mm. It's like, you're like, oh, I've got to get up, I've got to go there. It's not far, it's a minor. I'm just trying to make an excuse for myself. But the easy accessibility of it being literally there, like if I've got to do anything or change anything or if I want to make a tune or get inspired from the TV, I can just walk there and do it. And, like, yeah. and that for me has been a massive game changer. The only thing is a bit of a challenge, um, well, I, it probably will be, but um, I've had to submit a, a final and I've done the mix down at home, which obviously is, uh, is I did it in headphones. I've got pretty good headphones. When you say final, what, what do you mean? Uh, sorry, the final the final mix down for the release. Sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They wanted it quite quickly. It was, it was mm. like a remix that came up last week and I just did it. And um, yeah, I've, I've, I mean, it sounded good in the clubs. It sounded cool, but like, it's, it does feel a bit alien to me, a bit, a bit weird. So to me, going, bruv, you've got a studio there's fully with fucking sick monitors, sick acoustically treated, and you're <laughs> mixing down in your living room, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? With a pair of headphones, like, <laughs> so I think, right. But like, it sounds good. I'm gonna, again, I'll test it out again this weekend. And, and worst case scenario, I'll probably give it a double check at the studio. But all I'm saying is, I think change is definitely important, around like, and, and just like, if, if something's not working for you, don't just sit on it and just like go, Oh, it might be better tomorrow. Obviously, you get days where you're not very, not very creative and that, but that for me massively changed that. Even the social aspect of it as well. My studio is quite, quite small, so if I had anyone come over, mate, two people in there, and it's like you start to get really sweaty. Yeah. It's like that room. Like yeah, I was yeah. praying about them spilling a drink on my shit. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. So it's like it's too many anxieties and madness. Mm. It's like whereas there, my mates can like they can sit play a PS4 if they're on PS5. I'm, I'm on. A, I don't know. Just I, I like the social music. It's such a social. Uh, activity for me, man. Like I love having people in the room. I love just feeding off them, vibing off ev ev people's energy. I mean, being a solo artist can be quite lonely a lot of times. So it sounds pretty shit, but that, it, it got to the point in, like where my studio felt like a. I can say it wasn't a place I wanted to go to. Similar to what, similar to what you said earlier about about the ethos and the teaching. Yeah, I was yeah. like, mm. that's what I started. To, I started to like resent like, and I used to be like make excuses for not going and stuff. And I was like, this is not right, man. Like, I want to make tunes, but I don't in there. Like, mm. and it took me a while to really figure out because, like I say, I've got a studio that's fully 
it's a studio. Why yeah. am I going to take stuff home to? And I always had my laptop and I'd make ideas in it, but my laptop was literally just for that. I would never like write a full song on it. It'd just be like mm. just for more like an exercise. If I'm bored, cool, let's have a, let's make a little quick tune. I like, mm. chuck some loops together, whatever. That's 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 what I use it for. I never used to really take them off the laptop. They never really made it past that. It was just a bit of a fun exercise to do. But the fact now it's at home is just for me. It's really working, man. Mm. Like so, I'm oh, yeah. I've got that love. Not it's back, because they're not a loss, but like, yeah, it's just, again, I suppose if anyone's watching this that is feeling a bit stale, mate, in anything they're doing, like, yeah. I mean, just make some small changes, man, and you'll be quite, quite, um, yeah, yeah, you'll be pleasantly surprised with the outcome, I think. Yeah. You know, um, we spoke earlier about your schooling, and then you went to college. Yes. Yeah? And you went to college, and, well, actually, was that um, your private school, state school, then yeah. college, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. And you also spoke about, Hearing somebody sort of like playing sort of like drum and bass and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Where was your where were your siblings in this sort of like world of yours as you were growing? Well, up? You know, it's mad. Like, like my, my Fabio, Fabio, um, he's my he's my, uh, my actual brother. Brother, I've got I've got a, I've got a half brother who I, I class my brother to be honest with you. I don't I don't, but he is my half brother. Then he's got a different mum, and then I've got three, I've got two twin sisters that are, that are seventeen. I think they're eighteen next year. And then I've got, yeah, and then I've got three stuff. So there's quite a lot of, and that's just, that's just like the, the direct, the immediate family. I've got cousins and uncles. Mm. So, um, yeah, growing up, me and my brother and my cousin Fran, like, were, were proper close. Like, we used to be like, we used to be, it was weird. We've done the full cycle thing. We used to be like, like, Grebos. Like, we used to do skating and that. Like, me and my brother used to have skateboards and we went through that phase of like being into punk and all that stuff. Then it went to the rap, like, uh, and then it went to, like, I, I, got, I really got into like, the trance stuff, like proper, like the old. And what, like, what age? Did, oh and God. What, what age difference are you three? Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, I should yeah. have said that. So my brother Fabio, he he is two years younger than me. Um, Fran, my cousin, I think is the same age as Fabio. Uh, so yeah, two years younger. And then my other brother Guy, he's one year younger than me. So yeah, we're we're, we're close. We're, yeah, we're very close. close. Yeah, I mean, again, yeah, very because, because close, Italian yeah. family. Every Sunday we go to my nonna's. So we 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 we'd be actively together like every single week. The family thing was massive back in there. It still is now, but like it really was like when growing up. I remember like every Sunday without fail, we'd go to my nonna's. We'd have lasagna. We'd have we have the three course meal. We'd have like it just would be normal. Like it wouldn't. There's no way of getting out of it. It's just that's what you. That's what we do. That's part of the week. Like and the family thing was massive. Like growing up, we'd always go to. Yeah, we'd go around there, then my uncles would come over and et cetera, et cetera. And, and yeah, I, I, do you know what? I can't lie, family-wise, like, it, 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 was, it was quite a, quite a, a pl what's the word, flourish. Like, it was quite a, it was, it was yeah, the, fam the family life, like, we were very close, man. Like, mm. things have happened since that have kind of disjointed that, I'll be real. But, yeah, I'm still very close with, with, with my, my real ones, man. Mm. And, and, yeah, it's, it's nice. But, yeah, when we were growing up, like, yeah, we, we just used to be the typical kids, man, at that age. I mean, just causing shit, like... Mm. Nothing, nothing crazy. But me and my brother didn't really used to get on too tough. Like I think it was the brother, it was like kind of the big brother versus. I was quite jealous of him. Like when I was a kid, apparently my mum told me that when when my mum first brought him back from the hospital, I was like, "You can come in, but you can't." Like to, to the baby. Yeah, to the baby. <laughs> and when it was his Christmas as well, I don't know if you remember, they used to wear these. But like, you would have only been two. I know, bro. Isn't it? What's Sammy's <laughs> guy, man? Like, leave him be. Man was savage from two years old. Yeah, Listen, man, yeah, man. Yeah, mum, you could come back. Yeah. You know what, but, but that little fella you come with here, you're gonna, boy, you, you know gotta what, go Bob, back. Me, she, she would tell you, she, every opportunity that she wasn't looking, I'd pinch him or I'd, or I'd hit him or make really, him. Yeah, bro. bro, I used to hate on him, man, hard. No way. I, yeah, I swear to that. I remember it was just christening, yeah, and like, you know, you, you, you don't even know why. Yeah, I don't even know why, bro. I was just jealous of because I think I love the attention, innit? Yeah, like, yeah. And so I was like, who's this little guy, man? Like, How did he drop out? The window. Yeah, I, know, I was not window. I don't know. He must have crawled out <laughs> yeah. the window. I'm only two. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, went, I, went, I went on his Christmas. Yeah, on his Chris. On his christening, like um, they have to wear these like dressed, kind of dressy kind of things. And if you know, if you've seen yeah, them, yeah like, of course I've seen yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And, uh, seen the Godfather, ain't I? So. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what killed like, he, he was he was getting photos, my nonna was holding him, and I yanked his dress, bruv, like, and I think no story, he was on the bed. I yanked his dress to try and pull him off the bed, and my nonna just caught him, like, and I was thinking, but I'm not an evil you, you know. Like. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we always had this friction. It went up to about I'd say probably 12, 13. Wow, yeah, that's a bro. long time, We never man. really got on. It was always conflict. Wherever we, that's a because long because time. I think, do you know what it is? Like, again, it's got, I'm probably unlocking things I've never even consciously said mm, in my head, mm. my head. But I do think it's like I was I was hating. I was probably jealous of the fact that I wasn't getting as much attention when I was a kid. But I do think as we got older, because he was just that guy, he just had that 
a pizzazz. I don't really know. He, just had, he always had the cool air. I don't know. He was just that guy. And I, I, I wasn't. I didn't feel like I was. So I feel like my way of making myself fully feel better was, was by... It was like, even though even you've better. got that, I can still be, bu yeah, I can yeah. be a bully, essentially. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. It's quite yeah, savage, yeah. actually. So maybe, yeah, that's mad. And then, and then the karma got me in school and I got bullied. So yeah, I think yeah, that's probably yeah. where it came from. But mm. to be honest, yeah. Like, and we, we, we connected. It sounds so fucking stupid. But I remember when we lived in... Uh, I remember when we lived in Bromham, like he, he was out with his mates. He had his little group of mates. I had mine. I remember there was like certain places that you go to the rope swing or Disney Lane, certain places that you always meet your mates at. And we, went to the, we went to the woods because um, that's where everyone was, etc. And he was there with like his mates. And then my mates were there as well. And I saw he was smoking a cigarette. And kind of weirdly enough, that's how we, that's how we uh, bonded, man. It's, it sounds so mad. But from then, we were literally inseparable, man. It's weird. It's like... We were literally did everything together. Like his mates were my mates, vice versa. We were into the same things. Like we probably supported each other. Like it's weird how it just completely changed like that, man. And yeah, like that from, from there, from there, really, our, our, our kind of relationship really, really blossomed, man. And we we were pretty inseparable, man. We had the same group of mates. Yeah, we just had this connection, really. Like, and he supported me, and I supported him. And that's one thing I really miss about him not being here. It's just like, just he'd always be the guy that I'd ring like daily, like just to like, I don't know, oh fucking hell, this has happened or whatever, just to like vent to. So that 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 being gone is is hard, man. But um, yeah, like I do I do cherish the time that I've, like, he has he has been there. Interestingly, you saying that it was because of the smoke in the cigarettes. Yeah. But I wonder actually, if. You know, like you'd you'd longed for that, and yeah, yeah, and longed for that one thing, longed for that it. neutral agreement. Yeah, but yeah. prior to that, like even if we played FIFA or any kind of anything that was like competitive, like I, I, if I didn't win, I would I would actually I'd li I'd wh wh whack him, like I'd, I'd I'd fucking retaliate, and then then he'd be crying, and I'd be I don't know, it was mad a mad dynamic. So it was weird to have that one thing that we both like because obviously we were young, we were keeping it from our fucking parents, we weren't like smoking, we were only we were fucking else young, fourteen. 15 or whatever so yeah it was still quite so I think that kind of like oh you do that as well yeah sick like and then yeah we just we just it just kind of went from there really and it's weird I think we both respect each other because I looked up to him because he was just he just had that that energy like I said to you earlier like I was not really a popular kid in school so he, he had that that vibe that confidence that swagger about him which I longed for and I think a lot of like his style kind of I definitely got influenced by that because he always like he always just looked the nuts man all the time like doesn't matter where he was going what he was doing he always looked 10 10 like and if i was going out of him i was like fucking hell, i better, I better get the good shit out, i better get the, the good arms out or whatever and I, I would make sure that uh, i'm on i'm on his level and i think he respected my work ethic because he always looked up to me because he wasn't he wasn't the most um business minded guy he got involved in some in some pretty in some wrong in some with the wrong crowd started doing things he shouldn't have done etc cetera, etc cetera. and that was him for a long time like i think he he looked at what I did with with uh, with pride and like kind of almost inspired and and proud. Yeah, pride is probably the best word. Like, and, uh, because he could see like, that I was striving for something. He could see that I was putting work in. I was, well, uh, yeah. And, and I think I think that mutual respect from each other. And we both just were just there, man, for each other. Like we both supported each other fully through through everything. And 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 yeah, man. Like, I definitely think we helped. He come to a lot of my come come to a lot of my events. Like back in the day when I used to do like. I used to have a brand called Time Is Now, I still have it, but it was mainly a clothing brand, but we then did like events and stuff. And yeah, and I, he would come and help and I mean, help sell the clothes here and he'd want to be involved. He'd help with the creative process and we'd have meetings about what to release next in regards to, to clothing. And, and he'd be a massive creative director in that. He would he would have like the, yeah, he would know, he, he was big on little little things. Like he, he wouldn't have a hair out of place. So like when it comes to like designing something, like he was very creative like as well. Like he would, he was sick at drawing. Yeah, man. So together, it was just a sick little, sick little team, man. And and say, so yeah, so I, 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 I cherish them, them years we had together, um, growing up. You know, um, interesting is to hear in the dynamic of how you grew up in yeah. your earlier ages and how that changed into the friendship. You know what I mean? Yeah, you man. know, like, you know, because it was almost like it was. He was like an enemy in many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can't lie. I don't even know why. I don't yeah, even know yeah, why. Yeah. But I just, I think it's coming back to this maybe being jealous and maybe the traits he had, which I wish I which had. Wish, yeah, 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 and probably same for him, probably same for him. He probably looked at me and thought, oh, I wish I was as hard working as Frank, or wish I found that thing that he, that, that, cause I found music quite early. He, he, he was he was pottering around different jobs. He didn't really find um, his proper thing till later on, like late twenties, man, which when by then I was doing this full time. Yeah. I was a bit, and I get it, he had the pressures then of like going, cause my dad's pretty successful. Yeah. Like he had the pressures then of trying to like, um, uh, 
yeah, trying to live up to them kind of expectations, I guess, of like, oh, Frank's doing really well, my dad's done really well, I'm still struggling to find yeah. what the fuck I want to but do. But even, like, even before then, from what you're saying to me, yeah, uh, um, I hope you don't mind. No, no, bruv, talk about it, man. Yeah, 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 I'm happy to talk it's about like, it. Is that you say that, you know, like, just going to go with a little bit of a timeline. Yeah, of course. So you, you, you're... 15 then, right? Yeah. You're like in upper school, you're almost about leaving school. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and in that time, in that time, you're in the woods, smoking. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? You, you know, like, you're doing what, what kids do, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean, at that age. But, just let me get this right. Were you all, had you already found your way in music at that time a little bit? Or were you already big? It was a ho- by then it was a hobby. So it was a hobby and we had a little crew in, in my ends like who was all into it. And it was a drum and bass crew. Yes, yeah. So right. we had a little crew. There was it was weird because it was not weird. So it was funny because there was like an older crew who were like kind of like the the um they had like the Vestax, Dax, Dex and all that, cause the good shit, like the Technics and that. We were still on Gemini's and like IMGs and that. They were like the guys, like they were sticker at mixing. Like, we looked up to them and it like, they were like the oldest, like we'd see them, see them sometimes out and about, but like, yeah, to get invited back to their yard to do a mix was like a fucking privilege, man. Like, do you know what I mean? So that was kind of like, as big as it was for me then, like I was just enjoying just like the, the community, the fact that we we're all into this music, like just having a passion for something. Like, and then when I bought a pair of decks, like, I remember I bought my first pair of decks and it was like a, a pair of IMG belt drives. And he gave me, that was, I don't know, it was about five or six vinyls. I, had, like, I remember I had like Friday by Dre, I had like um, Addicted to Bass, like a tune, a couple of trance things. And I was actually trying to mix them together, not having a fucking clue what I was doing, bro. But just having some fun, just like mixing them out. And then my mate had a pair of decks, the one I said come up down from London. He was a he was a massive like inspiration into actually me getting into this, really, man. I've got a big up Sean Dodsworth, man, like absolute G. He showed me this music, which I didn't know what it was. And and from then we just got obsessed. obsessed. And there was a good crew, there was a good, I'd say at least 10 to 15 of us in this village that were fucking like proper on it, man, for it. Like we'd... What year was that about? Well, yeah, it would have been when I was 15, 16. So yeah, 2002, three, early 2000s, man. Like, that's when I properly like got introduced to this. I think the first tune I even heard, and I, I, I mean, this is, this is definitely older, was, was Pulp Fiction. That was like the first show. I remember we were out on like a sleep out in, in the woods and like that was come on. I was like, yo, this is hard. And then from there, I was like, yo, I want to know more about this shit. Cause like before it was a set that he had on like his, on his Walkman, like back in the day sets, like the Slammy Vinyl, Accelerate Culture, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, I, like I say, I just fell in love with it, man. It's like, what is this music? What is this like, what is this thing? Like, what is raves? I just got really obsessed with it. And because we had like loads of us so passionate about it, it was just sick, man. I mean, that part of it, like my childhood, that's when I suppose like I really started to get excited, man. Cause it was just like, yeah, it was like, oh, finding out new things. I'm finding out who I am, what I might want to do. And I, I just like, it's, yeah, I just got into it and I was just like, look, I want to do this. Like, I wasn't, you know, you got the crew, like, yeah, yeah, we're just a crew, we, we'll do play, you might play a couple of local bookings in, your, in the pub or something or whatever, but you don't, no, no one sees past that. It's like, yeah, right now it's just sick, but I was always like, no, nah, you know what, I actually want to do this, man. I feel like, I love it, I'm really into this, like, and why can't I make this my career or something I can do with it? Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's literally where I think the, the seed exploded in. Mean, I've started thinking about it more and more, I thought, maybe I can do this, you know? And then, then yeah, then I just went from, like I said, when I was in school, done music tech, and then uh, I did the, did a year there, and then when I left school, I was like, I don't know what I want to do definitely, but I'm, I'm liking this music shit, so I'm going to go to college and do um, music tech, music technology there, and that's what I did. I went to college. I didn't have the grades to go to like the, the, the this course, so I had to do like a startup course to get. So I was there for three years, and then from there, I actually went to university and got a foundation degree in music technology. So and what was the essence of music technology? Uh, well, that, that was basically the whole producing. So actually, oh, the, yeah. the whole from the ground up, like uh, a, lot, a lot of it as well, which I, I wish I listened to more back then. But at the time, like for instance, like the acoustics, the transformations of sound, like all like the way the science of it all. Yeah. That, but like that stuff is probably the, the most important shit really to understand yeah. the physics and the actual science behind why this does this and if you add this to this it equals this so um but yeah i was i was, I was playing around there was there was, there was there was a bunch of kids really in 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 the um in the class where like you could tell some of them were just like oh i don't know what to do so i'm gonna pick this like mm-hmm. and you'd see them, certain people drop off like flies after the years went by and that but yeah i learned a lot so we learned and we also learned how to like set up like record live things in the studio record mic up drums like how to um uh, record like a, a a live environment as well like on a mix desk etc in a venue um, we done 
we done multimedia as well, so we put our like, music to film, which is something that I've actually, I actually still do. I don't do it professionally, but it's helped me massively that. So what I learned from, from the schooling of it all was mainly the business side. That side of it really did kind of make me go, okay, this is how I can monetize this. This is how I can make it into a business. It's how I need to think about the next 10 years. Like, what am I going to do? Like, I need, if this is going to be a job, I want to be, uh, and a business, and this is what I do, I need to make sure that it's clean. So that's the main thing. All the things that I learned in there about kind of like production and stuff, when I, when I left, they went out the window because like, they teach you by the book where we're trying to make stuff that's, we're not trying to make pop music, we're trying yeah, to push yeah. the boundaries yeah, and make sounds that, and put distortion on it again and again and do things that maybe aren't ethically the right thing to do. But that's that's kind of where you get the results that we're getting. You know what I mean? We're not, we're not making um, kind of that kind of music. So that, that, that definitely... Um, opened my mind to it a lot like when I left and and then from there literally I was already kind of I think I was like going out there and I don't know it took me a while to actually go raving to be fair I don't know why I, just, I didn't I think the first the first rave I went to was Global Gathering that like, was the first like rave I went to because I wasn't really into drugs like then I was I smoked a bit of weed but I wasn't really into drugs a lot of my mates that went raving then yeah. they were doing the pills etc they were on that and I, I just didn't really I was like mm, I don't know if I'm really on that kind of shit man it's actually a funny story, which I might as well tell. But the second, the second year I went to Global Gathering, I, I bought some like legal pills from that stall there, like mm. fucking thinking, oh, do you know what? I'll get involved, but they're legal, they're fine. Yeah, but yeah. I was up for a week, fam. Like, oh, really? I had to tell my fucking mum, I was like, mum, I need a cuddle, man. Fuck, I need to go. Let's, let's sleep in a bed of her. Oh, I was really? like, yeah, I was a broken man. I can't lie, I couldn't sleep. It was fucked, man. Like, completely fucked me up, like, completely, like. Um, so yeah, but like going back to like the first race, so, like yeah, it took me a while to actually like go out, out, and then when I got the bug and I was out, and I was like, because the thing is back then as well, like if you went out into town, that's what you you either you either were a town guy that went out to the bars and clubs in that way, but back then you had to wear like shoes and fucking trousers. Now you can wear anything, but back then you had to wear shoes, trousers, you had to dress up quite well, and like I just didn't like that environment. I didn't like the environment of going out. It was always fights. It was always like it was a different agenda. Mm. No one was going out for the love of the music. It was like let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. fucking fight. You know what I mean, I was yeah. just like, mm, I, I don't like. I can't, I can't be in a place where, where for one, the tunes were so important to me because I just hated that cheese shit. Like, and yeah, when I, so when I started going raving, I was like, wow, you can wear fucking trainers. Like, boy, you can wear hats. And, mm. What is this sick? Like, and just, yeah, I just loved the, the environment. And then I just got the bug. And then from that kind of just went alongside with the, with the DJ and with the producing. And then I started going out more. And then the circle starts getting bigger. You start meeting more people. And back then, you used to hand out CDs to like people. Like, to, like I don't know, Hazard was my idol, man. Like, still is. But like, he was the main guy. He was, I think he's the, he's the main guy that made me think, fuck me, I really want to fucking do this. But yeah, I remember giving him a CD at fucking valve sound or something like giving like bare man cds and stuff and just like just basically canvassing like that and building your network out and then the more you start going raving the more you start knowing people then you know the, then you might see x man again you go oh what mate you what and then you start building building and building and then then yeah from then you kind of yeah we had a couple of lucky breaks like, luckily my mate harry bizzle like who's still my best mate um he doesn't make drum bass anymore he doesn't sorry he doesn't play drum bass anymore but um yeah, like he 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 was another one that was really hungry with it as well. That I met through this kind of like journey, and he wanted to take it there as well. So we had this, we both had this kind of like passion to go, lad. We want we want more than just like playing in our bedrooms and that. Like we want to take it further, and we did. And he was really, he actually had a really successful like um, couple years, man. Like working with like Flying Squad, like Nutcrackers Boys and stuff, and Eternal Music, which is like Chunky Bizzle and Lloydy and stuff. Like he done really well, and he was at a lot of shows. He was playing with some big artists, like, and then he got to the stage because he didn't because he didn't produce. He got to that, that threshold where he couldn't go any further. And that's when I kind of like, because I was producing, I kind of overtook him. And then, then eventually he kind of lost a love for it. And now he makes house and he's actually doing really well. But that kind of like, that, that, that was the importance of how you, much, for me, how much producing, because like anyone can mix two tunes together. If you're a big guy and you've got certain dubs of certain people, cool. Like you've got certain tunes no one's got. But yeah. for like an up and comer, you ain't. You just got like the tunes that are out. Um, mm. Or if you're lucky, you might get a free download somewhere. But even then, it wasn't really about an internet thing, really. Like mm. it was still records. I got into it when it was vinyls, like, and that was my main objective. When I started, when I got into it fully, I was like, I need to have a vinyl out. That's like, that's like the to me. I know if I got a vinyl out, I've, I've made it. Mm. Like, that was my first mm. goal, if you like, like, and that was fucking amazing. I've still got it on my wall now. Um, but yeah, just like these little, like slow, these little things that were happening will just give me more belief, like more confidence in my own ability and more confidence that, like, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do, man. Like this is, this is, this is, this is what I love. Like I'm young, I'm fucking, I haven't got many overheads. Do you know what I mean, I still live with my parents. Like oh, this is the time to fucking really get my teeth stuck in and work, it's, man. It's interesting that you had that foresight though, like. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, oh, my dad, so, probably. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so are you certain, however, that that foresight is, you're not looking at it um, with hindsight, or did you feel like that at that time? Did you feel at the time like, you know what, I could do this, I'm living at my parents, I, I don't have any overheads, 
you know, you know, all of the things you've just now said, were, were those things running through your mind at that time or were they, or were they things that you feel now knowing now, that now, that's now, what now, happened? Do you know what? I, I, actually, I actually really remember, remember consciously thinking about these things. I, and I think that's what I'm saying. It goes back to having that, that kind of business kind of etiquette my dad had. Like, and, and even what I learned from college and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because like, uh, that, that kind of installed in me that, bro, this is a business. Like, you need to, you need to run really, that business. That's really, really, really helpful. And do, you know, do you know what as well? I was one of the first guys, like, I think, like, Especially when I when I broke through to um, well I didn't break through I still an Apple Comer but the first thing I did when I when I registered like the Turno bank account etc like, and actually registered the business I wanted to go tax register straight away which I know a lot of people try and swerve it and again I'm just, I get it but back in the day it was a lot of cash and hand stuff so I get it mm -hmm. like, but I was like look I want if, if I'm doing this properly I want to do this properly I don't want to have any fucking one knocking at my door like, mm. and and so from the ground up like, I had an accountant I remember because my dad helped me with that as well accountant like. I remember the day that I uh, that I, I I finished working at my dad's and and I because I used to basically work I used to work there full time then it got to a stage where like Tuesdays and Thursdays I'd finish at one so I can go upstairs to the studio and, and work then and that kind of worked for me but what I find myself doing was like because of the certain sound that I had and I had the booking at the weekend or whatever I, like I would just be write, writing tunes for the weekend like which is cool nothing wrong with that but I didn't have a chance to really explore my musical capabilities mm. because like. I was like, what, four hours, I've got to sit on weekend, I need to make a fucking banger, like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't really like a, like a one in ones where I could let the tune go left if I wanted it to. If it went mm. left, I'd go, nah, go this way, like, mm -hmm. it's gonna need to be like this. So after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the jump now. I remember I had a grand in my bank, which I saved, and I, and I told my dad, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go full time, I'm gonna make, make the jump. And um, I did, and I fucking, I can't remember what age it was. I remember putting a Facebook status up, someone even messaged me the other day saying, fucking, I remember this, like, but I, I was young, I was young, I, I probably put early, early 20s, I rate, right? like, and I made the jump, and to be honest, mate, that's when it all changed, man. Because I literally had, I knew then that, like, bruv, it's all on you now, bruv. If you fail, mm. you've got to go back to your dad's or go back to get a job, and that, that for me was the biggest motivator. It still is now. Like, if I ever, if I ever had to go back to working or quit music, like, I would feel like I'd failed. And I know I haven't, but it would, it would burn me knowing I've got to come out of this because I've failed. Like, mm. so that, that for me was the biggest motivator, man. I didn't stop because of that, because I thought the thought of like going, oh fuck, I've done, I've fucked it up. So mm. with that energy, I just fucking rip music. Well, well done, mate, well done, you know, because that is, that is a, um, the fact that you were at that age and you were able to, you know, follow those breadcrumbs, or not even breadcrumbs, because they're not actual breadcrumbs, they're more desires, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You're into the music, I'm gonna go and do a course on it yeah, then. Yeah, man. It's just yeah. another common sense step. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Okay, oh, right. Instead of thinking I'm... about it for 12 like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh right. So now I'm at the course. Oh, they're teaching me. Oh, so right. Oh, it's a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what? Uh, you, you've already got this sort of like work ethic instilled yeah. in you that like, I've got to go to work. I mean, like, lots of people have that. But, yeah, yeah, of course. But kind of reminds me of like when I was at the talk the other day and yeah, yeah. speaking about how in the very beginning, a lot of people in the very early stages, it was so excited mm. about the fact of, oh shit, I just got paid. Oh, I got paid again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wicked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, people are patting me on the back. Yeah, yeah, oh, I must yeah, be yeah, well known. Yeah, yeah, oh, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. People are saying my name. Oh, drinks, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, don't have, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't have to pay. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's wicked. Food, yeah, yeah, back, sweet. Like... And you, well, all of that is for me. I'll take it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it takes a while um, before you realise that. Shit, this is going to be every weekend, guys. Yeah. But if you're able to very quickly recognise in the early stages that, right, this is going to be every weekend, this is a business, mm. I'm going to manage it in that way. I think as well, a lot of people like live, they were living for the moment. They weren't really thinking about the next 10 years. They weren't thinking next five years. They were going, yeah, cool, got paid, let's get fucked up or whatever, let's go and go mad. Or, and, and then think, remember, think about the, the, the next day, the next day. Like, with me, I was kind of like, right, I had 10 years. But I was always big on fucking, yeah, writing my targets for the year. I still do it now. Like, I've got it on my, my whiteboard in my studio. So I look at it every day. And I think planning is everything, man. You got, you, what do you want from this? Do you know what I'm saying? You've got to ask yourself, like, do you want to just, are you just doing it for right now? Because it's cool, like, because it sounds cool and you're working. Like, well, think about it, whatever you're doing, like, what is it you want from this, this job or this current, yeah, what do you want from life, basically? Like, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. that for me was a really important factor to go, what is it I actually want? And then when I started writing these goals down, like, they started fucking happening, bro. Like, I swear down, they started happening. Like, and I remember one especially, like, when I left Urban Agency, like, big up them guys, because they fucking, they really did uh, um, start my career. Um, and Echo messaged me, uh, well, Echo, I, it was weird, it was weird. I met Friction for a meeting about a label thing, because he wanted to get me on a label. And he was with Obi, who obviously runs uh, Echo, now UTA. And he was there, and I, I was like, and that was on my list to join Echo. Like, so I was like, this is mad how I've just met him. 
Then a couple of days later, bro, or next week, I got I got an email saying oh, we're gonna have a meeting, and I was like, fucking yes, bro. I'm like what? Mm. And then yeah, the rest was fucking history, and I, I was like, wow, this is mad. Like this is actually, and I was one. I think pretty sure I was one of the first like jump up acts, like whatever you want to call it, to actually cross over onto that agency. Like really, like the solely known for that. If, if correct me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone out there, but. So yeah, to be on there at that, that stage was, was, was fucking massive for me, man. I mean, I was... And what year was that? Oh, Do you God, remember? That was five to seven, yeah, probably five to seven years ago. So that happened. When I went on there, like, um, yeah, and I was amongst, like, gigs, Charlie Sloth, Chase and Stay, all these big artists, like, massive world, like, massive artists, Marshmello, fucking Diplo. I was like, bro, look at me on the roster. Man. I was so gassed, man, so gassed and privileged to be on it. And that's when shit really up to me like in regards to like just everything really man like, that was the first time I really got like riders and like hotels and like and the bookings were bigger and they were fucking better shows and just got treated differently and I was like this is mad this is actually this is sick like where before it was a lot of cash and stuff like you'd be lucky to fucking get a drink <laughs> fucking <laughs> sharing your rider with seven other people like <laughs> um, but yeah so like that's when I realized like right oh, this is sick man this is proper like and I remember I, I remember I had to have I had to get an advance on board because that's something I didn't know about then like you know like it, with other agencies they have it included like, but when you go into like a, a a big one, they just get the bookings. Then you have to, you have to pay for someone else logistically to like, for them to send over the stuff, to, uh, the details, and then they book all the stuff with you. So that was quite an interesting uh, thing I like, had to deal with because I was like, oh, what, what more money I got I've got to give away? Because that was that was it was already ten percent to them. Then it was like I think I had to pay like hundred pound a show for them, etc. So like, you like thinking, fucking, hell, this is mad. Like, but then when I got into it, like the nocturnal guys who who I was with before. Um, they're fucking amazing, man. Like, and you realise that they are literally there for you 24-7. And that's when you're a solo artist and you're you're quite young, you're quite naive to this new lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? If you ever, I remember missing flights or just something fucking up, it doesn't matter what time it was, they were 24-7. Like, if I messaged them, someone would get back to me within a couple minutes. Don't worry, we'll sort the flight for you. And then that, that having that stress taken away from you, because everyone's been there, every artist, like when you start flapping because you're like, oh shit, my flight was an hour ago or whatever, or you might have missed something or missed a lift or... To have someone there, network there, to actually to like support you and, and, and help you. And I got really close to them, man. Like, it was quite a shame when I had to leave, but it just made more business sense to keep it because Inside the Night, who's my management company, they have a, an advancer there. So it, mm -hmm. made, it made more sense to keep it all in house eventually. But, but yeah, it was a mad experience. And then from there, I just, I just I remember that's when I made Invaders, which obviously was probably my biggest tune. Like, they really blew up. Andy C was champ. That's when he was doing that thing in XOYO, and he played it every fucking week, and it got the amount of love, uh, the amount of like, yeah, the amount of um, traction it got was crazy, man. Like, and that's when everyone from like Chase and Status, Sub Focus, like Dimension, all these big men who never even looked at me before, like were starting to play my stuff. Like I was like, right, this is fucking crazy. So from that, then I felt like I was part of this new, a part, I was included in this next, the next stage, if you like, of the of the rosters. Like, and it just, um, yeah, it just kind of went from there, really. And I've always just thought like. Bruv, like, yeah, I, I'm meant to be here. I'm not, like, it's not a mistake. Like, I'm, 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 I'm on it, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just ready to fucking, yeah, to, to see how far I can take. Every time the goalposts were here, and you'd get there, you go, okay, well, let's go in now. Let's go. And that's the beautiful thing about this, about this scene is like, potentially, you can fucking go anywhere, bro. Like, it's, it's not like if you're happy just being that weekly DJ in a club, or happy. I don't know, doing whatever it is, like then cool. But like you can potentially take it to here to here, or you can go down the multimedia route. There's so many different ways. Like even recently, I've just started doing like kind of like studio sessions with, um, with, with I've, like writing camps and stuff, which I've never really done um, since since about since last year. I think I did my first one, and like even that was it was a very anxious experience to start with because like you're like in a room with a bunch of strangers. Like that's pretty much it, and you got to write here. That's that's the that's the ball. That's the the task ahead mm -hmm. and it's like that can be quite quite an anxious thing man to go to walk in a room and, and be expected to make it to gel with all these people and make a hit like and after the first time i did it i was like right all these people are like me like we're all just fucking not weirdos but you know what i mean we're all like <laughs> we're fucking erratic and all that yeah, shit yeah. like we all connect so like it just it, it, it's a beautiful thing man that's, and that's how music kind of like the organic feeling of music and the best result you get, you know what I mean? Because you're all in this together from the ground up. This song has been made in that room. From the and that's a, that's a really beautiful thing. That's something I've learned recently, which I really, really enjoy. I get the same feeling from that process that, that I do from DJing, like, because like, it's a group thing, isn't it? Like, you're sharing stuff with a group and you're getting the energy back. And I, it, for me, it's something I've never really delved too much into, but Again, it's another potential avenue to go down. Even if you're just a session musician in there, sorry, a session producer or assistant producer to the artist at a question, or you're just a writer, or whatever. Like, 
all these things I didn't know that even existed. So this is something I'm rediscovering, I'm discovering now. Like, but yeah, it, it's I don't know, man. It's, it's just a really exciting um, uh, sector of uh, business to be in, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, it really, it really is, and it's in, it's nice, it's refreshing listening to you speak of it in that way. I mean, as you, the more you spoke, yeah, the bigger was, my grin. Yeah, was. I was get, I was getting a bit too gassed. I think. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the the more you spoke, the the bigger my grin got because. Um, because it, it is refreshing to hear the yeah. excitement about it and to observe you kind of like... Oh, excited. Yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I was about to get up, I was getting slow. I was about to get up. Man, man I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? so I but love that. But you know what, that, that, that's, that's a great thing to, like, to get out onto the, the people, though, because like <laughs> it's like, bro, like, I, I still get gassed. And even seeing you get gassed off me getting gassed, like, it's like, bro, it, it, is, it, is, it is what we do, man. It's, it's a beautiful... It's such a beautiful um, business to be in, like, um, and, and yeah, and ultimately we're all here for the love of one thing, isn't it? Like, so it's, it's yeah. it, it, it is a lovely uh, in, uh, industry, and um, it's still quite remarkable that 20, there's 23 years have gone past since the 2000s, and that where you started, and and that it was only seven, five or seven years. You couldn't quite work it out since yeah, yeah. you started at Echo. Mm. It's it's mad to see to think to see where it is now, but like it has always it's always been such a cultured thing, and like it's always just been such a I don't know man like the people that go to to Dima, for me Coronet was like a massive like that was the one I used to go to every and I, that's one of the venues I was in and I was like oh my fucking god this is what I want to do like look at this fucking stage look at the production mm. and I remember that was one venue that when I pl finally played in there that I was really like quite emotional about because mm. it was just like the wow like the amount I've done again. Another thing, like another thing ticked off, like that you write yeah, down yeah. or that you envisage, like and visualize, and it actually it actually happens. And it's just for me, like the whole. I think what's really got proper proper got the fall in love factor for me with the whole music and the culture was like when I started going out and you have like your proper like team, man. Like, and you you can go anywhere in the fucking country and you've got them guys that you know them guys from Bristol, these guys from Manny, these guys from Birmingham. Oh, we same up. And then before you know it, you're an after party together, are you your mates? Like, and then your network just keeps getting bigger and bigger. You you, you show, and it feels like a family. You're at home, and then it was it was really really nice, like. Um, yeah, family thing that like when yeah. we used to go Innovation the Sun, obviously everyone was there. And the amount of connections and the amount of just like mates that I'm still friends with now that like, yeah, I've met really through nice. that environment, like, mm. and they're still kind of like messaging me once in a while and, and they'll be like, oh, you're doing really well. And it's, 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 it's just nice to hear, man. But like, it's definitely that is where the love, because it wasn't just about the music, it was like the, the family factor of like, yeah, we're going out together. And, and, and you, I think a lot of people felt that like they belonged in that as well. What, they didn't go out in town or whatever, had other hobbies. Like, we went to this place, mm -hmm. this church, like, and we mm -hmm. worshipped and it was like, it was it was a beautiful thing. There were so many people I didn't, because I didn't really fit in before. Like I said, you're going back, back, back. Like, so I found like I'd found my place that I could just be me. And, I, and, it, and it was actually really, yeah, beautiful thing, man. Nice, so that that massively, massively like really got the nice love going, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then from there I was just like, right, I really want to do this now, and then and then mm. yeah, just you know, um, I listened to all of this, and one of the things that that I remember you saying was um, as you were getting as you were growing up, you spoke about your brother getting into into a wrong crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And I want to kind of, kind of like have a discussion about yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's I want to have a discussion about that because of the fact that there's a lot has happened since yeah, yeah. Um, since then. I, I just want to say this as well, which you might not know. This is that, I, I, but I told your dad actually. We were speaking. We were having yeah, a chat yeah. the other day, and um, I, I had to rate you, bro. And the reason I have to rate you is because what, what, as far as I know, and excuse me if I made a mistake here, but I think your brother passed away since the pandemic, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was after, yeah. Right, now then, I had only come across you, it felt like, yeah, in that group, yeah, which started from the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. The tragedy had happened with your brother, mm -hmm. and then, and then obviously a year had passed because you put in the group, mm -hmm. hi guys, it's the anniversary. Yeah, and it yeah. was at that point I went, I didn't even know, bro. Yeah, yeah. But Frost said it Frost said it the other night. He said, he said to me, I didn't even know. I was like, Bro, really? I didn't what? even know. Wow. And I went, what? I went, I didn't know nothing about this. And so I went online. Okay, so you don't, but yeah. I went online just to just to see yeah, yeah, your yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to read any stories. No, no, he... And I started seeing all of these pictures of you and your brother yeah, together, yeah, yeah. like in press shots. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I was like, yo, these two were close brothers, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they were tight. And I thought, how could this brother had to have gone through this yeah, yeah. on his own? In, it, through this thing, I never knew, bro. And I just wanted nah, to say bro, that cool. I, I just wanted to say that, you know, I commended you for Thanks, how you bro. kept yourself together during that time, which would have been like, I can't oh, imagine I what it was like. Man, yeah. I can't imagine what it was but like. You know what, it's the only, it's the only, the only way I know how to, to give, I think I said it the other night, like it's just through music and just through, through work. Like it, the thing that was really fucking hard to process, like when it happened, like I think my dad spoke about it the other night. Like obviously we got, I don't mind talking about it, but we, we, we got, he's had mental health problems for quite, quite a while, like mainly through drink drugs, through, um, through what he does, through, through again, probably lack of belief, and definitely stemming from the split of mum and dad, 100%. Why, which... why would you say that? Because, he because that's important. There's a lot of kids who um, parents split because up. Because he was really close to my dad. Mm. Uh, and um, when he left, obviously that broke him. I can't lie. He was a daddy's boy fully. Um, so that really broke him. And then, again, a number of just things that happened over the years. Again, it's no one's necessary fault. It's just how things unfolded. But my brother was quite very sensitive. So he was very loyal. So if he told you something, told you a secret, brother, and you told someone, he would fucking, he would, he would that'd be it. He wouldn't chat to you again. Like, so he was very loyal and he took things very sensitively. So that's why when it comes to the point where... It's mad. Uh, so when it, when it, the thing that I remember vividly, I lived with, with him and my ex at the time. We lived in the house in Shortstown in Bedford. And that's when I really clocked. Um, he was selling drugs. I've got, no, I've got no problem saying it. Like, he was selling drugs. So that's when I really, when I was living with him, really realised like, the extent of what this lifestyle was doing to him and, and just what it's like, bruv. Like, it was just so erratic, like, so up and down. Like, that there was like cling film. It was, just, it was, yeah, it was like, it probably felt like a drug, a drug yard. And it was quite, I felt quite paranoid in being in that because I just thought, bruv, my girl's in here. What if fucking people come through the yard or whatever? He was very blase as well with music and stuff, like not caring what time it was. And I was thinking, bruv, you're fucking doing this. And you're, and it was getting, he used to get me mad. And I was like, oh, I, don't know, I had to go in my room and sometimes I'm just like, okay, it's not happening, it's not happening, and chill. So like that, 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 that was his first proper insight into seeing him like kind of like, day to day. How long did you live together? About about eight months, I'd say, six to eight mm. months. Like, uh, so we lived together and, and like I say, it, 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 was, it was a mess of, a, of, a, of an eight months, to be fair. Like, we were just partying all the time. It was just, it was, yeah, it was, the yard was a fucking mess. It was, it was not, not particularly a nice, um, yeah, a nice, a nice hurry, more nice gaff. But anyway, like, through that, I remember one night he come, he come home, um, he had, he had some weed left, he had a zoot left actually. And I was like, I remember I, was, I wanted a zoot and I, I couldn't be asked to go and get some. So I, I smoked it. I was like, I was texting him, I don't mind, but I, I smoked your zoot. Like, and he messaged me, like, bro, what the fuck, man? And I was like, whoa. Like, I was like, cool, I'll go and get you one. He's like, nah, bro, what the fuck? I wanted that zoot. And I was like, I was like, oh, something's wrong, man. Like, mm. And he come back that night and that's when he fully just, and I, and I feel quite ashamed as a brother for not clocking this, but he just literally fucking told me everything. And I was like, what? And he was in floods of tears. He was a broken man. He told me everything, like everything to why he's, why he feels the way he does, what he's been like trying to commit suicide and trying to fucking, and it was fucking deep, man. I, and I felt so bad because I was like, how the fuck have I living with you? And I don't even, I've never clocked this. Like I felt such a shit brother. Um, yeah, so, and I was going on tour, I was going on like a European tour, like literally days after, and I was fucking shitting myself because I was like, bruv, you told me some pretty fucking serious allegations, some serious stuff which I want to help, but he didn't, he didn't really want people knowing about it. But I had to took it into my own initiative to go, look, I need to fucking tell my mum and my dad, they need to fucking know. So I did that, I rung them both and I told them exactly what happened. Without him knowing you were going to tell? <sighs> I think so, mate, I think so, yeah. Okay. Fucking, he'll fucking hate me for saying that, but um, I think so, bruv, yeah, because I was worried, because I was no, like, No, no, I, I like... understand, I understand. And also as well, the, this is the thing, with, like, with these, when things like this happen, like mental health problems, like, I know, I know the person in question is going through fucking hell, I know that, but also the loved ones around you, like, all you want to do is help. But then it's that you got to be careful with how you navigate around that help. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. starts to almost, starts to almost become a feel, feel a bit sneaky, like. And then if they get wind of that, then that makes it even fucking worse. They don't, they don't, they don't want to open up even more. And that's what I was worried about, man. I was really worried about fuck. Like if I tell the wrong person, or if I open up and and say because I wasn't there, so I was. Like, fuck. I even told my cousin as well, Fran, because they were close. I didn't want it necessarily to be like mum and dad coming over and. Ooh, do you know what I mean? I thought, no, let me let me just tell Fran like. 
the sly, he's not doing too good. Can you just pop in a couple of times this week and just chill with him? And he did, and to be fair, it helped. My brother knew that I told him, but I think the fact that he actually had someone there, kind of, he thought, you know what, he's doing the right thing. He looked past, like, the, the I wasn't chatting shit about him, basically. Mm. It was like, it was actual, mm. like, I was worried about him. I wasn't going to be there. Yeah, man. So that was when I first really clocked. And I can't remember when when it was. It was, it was a good four or five years ago, probably. Um, so that's when it first. And then and then eventually, like, yeah, we 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 got him some help. Like we actually got him. He was like, you know what? I want to get help. I want to get better. And we went. To, we took him to a couple of places to um, to talk to um, some people and stuff and and therapists and stuff. And he got to the stage where he was like, I'm cool now. I'm good. And you know what? We're like, you sure? He's like, yeah. And I was like, you know what? You got to respect the man. If he's telling us, we, I'm not going to mother him. Go, are you sure? Because that's the thing. He didn't want. He, he, he hated that. He, hated, he, he already felt like the black sheep of the family sometimes because of, um, I don't know, because he wasn't successful or he was always in trouble or, he, I don't know, he, there's, there's something in it. There's always something. My mum, my mum like, especially, like, every time he used, to, he used to come through the door, my mum would be like, oh, you've got Larry, you've got a sign. He'd be like, mum, I don't want to fucking hear it. And I said to my mum, like, like, years later, I was like, mum, like, Obviously, the reason why, because he was like, why is the relationship so volatile? I was like, mum, because like when he comes in, you're jumping on him straight away with like shit he needs to do. When he's probably walking in with like all this shit on his head, like, oh, and he's walking straight into that. And again, I don't blame that. Like, my mum didn't know. It's not like it's nothing, Pete. My mum's mom, just, yeah, mum's the nicest person in the fucking world, man. She'd do anything for anyone. She's done so much for him as well. Like, but yeah, I was just kind of trying to show her from a different perspective. Like, do you know what I mean? Just these are these are things where again, it'll knock his confidence. Like, if he's already feels like he's a failure, or these little things can ruin a man's day, bruv. Like, so just be careful about how you do things, like, or how you say things and stuff. And and then yeah, so eventually after he said it was okay, like we kind of just kind of got on with our life again, really. We had an eye on it, but you say you got respect a man for for saying you know what i'm cool now i'm good mm. and and he fucking wasn't man that's literally the, the be all end all of it and like i say there was, there was a number of times um yeah i remember once when he was in he was in um he was on a stag do in spain and he he um did he ring me i think he rang me i think his missus rang me at the time and she was at home and she was like she was crying her eyes out. she's like he's fucking gone he's gone in the sea and what he done is he he, he he fucked off from the other group he walked into the sea with the phone and he's like i'm gonna end i'm gonna do it and he, and he just dropped the phone and luckily she i oh, know fuck man. man she she got hold of someone there and marcus marrow like fucking love you bro for saving him he fucking run run to the beach and they and they, they fucking grabbed him out and luckily like Luckily, he survived, man. But that was like fucking the most. That I remember being on the high street in Bedford. I pulled over and I was like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" Because I was helpless. I couldn't do anything. It's yeah. like in Spain. I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? Shit. So that was again another massive alarm bell. He come back, and um, he hated the the the. the Are you alright? Like Everybody kind of, was kind yeah, of like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like Molly coddling him. Like, yeah. Are you gonna be alright? He hated that. He hated that. I was like, "But don't talk to him like that because he's gonna hate it." But it's, again, it's hard because like you're trying to what work do you out do, then? what do you do? Yeah, how, how do you navigate around this? So, yeah. And it started causing. And obviously, I was speaking to my my dad and my mum about problems, and then it was almost felt like we we're being sneaky behind his back. And it's like, oh, it was just it just it was it was a really hard thing to navigate around, man. Like, and um, yeah, obviously, un unfortunately, like he just couldn't handle it any anymore. And um, yeah, he he done it on. September a couple of years ago, like I remember getting it was so weird because I was at my dad's and I don't really go to my dad's that often in the week. Like, but I was around there for dinner, and um, yeah, man, I just got a phone call from his girlfriend saying Fabio's gone for a cigarette. He's been gone for twenty minutes. Where is he? Like, can you come in? Kind of, I was thinking hmm, this is a bit weird. And I remember, I remember we were eating, and I was like. I was like, fuck, Dad, I think we should go and see Fabio. And it kind of, it did cause a bit of a, a bit of a stir around the table. I was like, look, we've got to go. I've got a feeling this is fucking not good, man. I've just got a good feeling. And then, we, yeah, we drove up to, to where it was, which is like around the corner of my mum's house. And, uh, yeah, and we, pull, we pulled up the, 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 going up this road, we just saw bare feds. And I was like, what the fuck is going on, bro? And I was like, helicopters out. And I was oh, like, man. I was like, mate, what's happening? But what's he done? That's what we thought. What's he done? Like, not, not, not even thinking that like, yeah, what yeah. happened. Like, yeah, pulled up uh, and, um, yeah, his girlfriend Liv was just like fucking like he's he's, he's been gone for tw he's been he said he's going for a cigarette and he's just, he's been gone ever since kind of thing, and then like say like yeah it was just one of them ones where the police were like look we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll find find him. they found him and it was like the big like it was like a movie bro like it was like they come over like oh we found him we're, we're gonna try we're gonna try our fucking best to, to to revive him and make him okay and then it was the big wait and it was the big like I'm sorry but there's nothing we could do and that was I remember just dropping to my knees man and being like oh my sorry bro I'm so God. nah it's so cool sorry, bro. it's cool man it's cool I say I'm, I'm I'm so I, I sorry, feel, bro. I feel comfortable talking about it now, like in, yeah. without getting emotional, because it, it, yeah, I've fucking relived it so many times. So, but that was fucking so fucking how savage, bro. Like that was that was like 
seriously probably one of the worst moments of my life, man, because like my mum, the thing, yeah, we had all, all our family came. That's the thing again, which I do love about our fam, my family. As soon as, as soon as fucking everyone heard, bruv, the whole family was up there, bruv. Like the uncles, the aunties, the fucking cousins, the everyone was there, all there supporting it, just waiting for this news, like thinking, fuck, like. Um, and that's one thing I'll commend my family on, man. We definitely do have got each other's backs like that, man. And that was nice. But yeah, man, it just felt surreal, bro. And it just felt really fucking surreal that that's actually just happened. We even asked to see him, but they said, bro, you don't want to see him. He's, he's not looking like him. And I was just like, you know what, fuck. Like, so yeah, that was fucked, man. But that, uh, that f through that experience, like I say, like seeing my mum and dad like really fucking broken. Like mum, they were both fucked, man. And so was I, but like, I was really, the one thing I was trying to, the point I was trying to think about, well, I was going to make earlier before I went down this rabbit hole was like, the one thing I, I didn't understand with myself is like, I wasn't as physically upset as I thought I would be. Like, I wasn't like in my, like crying every day. And that kind of, I didn't really understand that. I was like, why, why am I not? Uh, I, I obviously bawled my eyes out when it happened. And I had loads of moments where I did. I had one, one other occasion where I remember I just, I just could not stop crying. I remember I was with my, my girlfriend at the time and she just could not get me to stop, stop crying. Cause I was just literally like in, for like hours, man. And I just, I, I have these moments where it happens, but like, I mean, look, he's on my arm, for fuck's sake. He's fucking, he's all around my flat. Like, he's literally everywhere. Like, everything I do now is is with him in mind. And that, that's why we set up the charity in his name. Fucking, that's why I made the song in his name. Fucking, yeah, we've done a documentary for the BBC for mental health about Fabio and about how it's just seeing the signs and we've done a course and stuff. So we've done, this is the only way that I can like keep his name going in my, in, in, in the right way possible. I feel proud that like he's, he lives on through every single fucking set I do. I play that song at the end and it's like everyone shouts his name. It's so, wherever we are in it's the world, it's yeah, fucking yeah. beautiful, bro. Like, mm -hmm. so every single set he's with me, I've now got this like new visual made as well, like where I've got like loads of photos of him playing with the words on the screen. It's beautiful, man. And at the end of the song, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a video that he took um, of himself, basically promoting uh, positive thinking. Like, and it was really moved me, man. And I put it at the end of the song, and now we've got the, the we found the original video, so it played. Oh, it's beautiful. So that, along with the charity, along with like the fight I did on a boxing fight with for, for, in his honor, and the whole night was for him. Like literally, like the whole night I had pictures of him everywhere. We raised like fifteen hundred quid for the charity. I won the fight, which was amazing. Like it was just like it was just oh mate, it was a fucking beautiful man. Like and it was like three or four of his mates that fought. My cousin fought as so well. All with his name on it, on, on Fabio on his shorts and fucking. It was just a beautiful thing, man. So we, it's almost like he hasn't gone. Like it's weird. Like obviously because we still celebrate his birthdays. We buy him a cake. We fucking all get together. As mad as that might sound, like so like it's like he hasn't gone. And because like his barber shop's still open, we've kept it open two years down the line. It's still going. Escobarbers, like it's his ting. Like he designed the whole fucking shop so we don't want to get rid of that so as i'm saying we just carry on as if he's still here really yeah, which yeah. is uh it's, it's a it's a weird it's a weird dynamic but like do you know what, for me it feels so fucking nice man and like my dad actually went to go and see a medium the other day he doesn't fuck he with told that. me i tell you yeah. yeah he told me yeah he doesn't yeah. fuck with that shit at all but he mm. went and he was he, trust me he was blown away he told me he said oh to did he me, tell yeah, you yeah he told me all about Bruv, it yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, things yeah. he was saying the things she was saying and i was like and he said she, he, he told me that she said to me that um fabio was um is proud of how I've uh, kept his name going, proud of what I'm doing. I'll be successful. You're going to be successful abroad. And like, just to hear that, bro, like yeah, that yeah. was everything. I was like, bro, what? I could pay 40 quid to potentially speak to my brother or <laughs> yeah, even yeah. to get some kind of sign. I was like, this is fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like he, he, he's, yeah, he still lives on in, in all of us, man. But um, yeah, like, that, was, that, was, that was a really tough time. And I think like you said, what you said about commending me for for just basically getting back on the horse and just fucking doing my... Because oh. if, if, honest, if honest with you, the last two years, I, I think for shit's got even even madder like, for me. So it's like, it's it's, it's crazy like, what that does to you, the strength it gives you uh, without you even knowing. Because I remember that weekend, he, he passed on the... I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. And I had a really busy weekend. I had like three shows. Obviously didn't do the first two. But the Sunday, he, he was meant to be coming with his missus to Strawberries and Cream and I was playing there. So it felt... Like I had to do it. I went mm. there with his missus, mm. with um, yeah, with my couple of my friends and his missus, and like, it was even that, fucking man. hard, bro. I, can't lie. I, I got on the mic saying. at the start. I even said, I said, fucking, this is for my brother. Like it was fucking hard, bro. Bro, but even this, that, man. Yeah, I know it's mad. I can't lie. Do you know like, what I mean? You know, like it's like it's a decision you made at that time that I just felt that right. maybe just felt maybe right, that was the. That was the catalyst maybe, to be maybe. able to do everything else. Maybe, mate. Yeah, maybe. Because you did it straight away. 
you didn't wait. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I just thought, look, he was meant to be there. Mm. I'm gonna fucking go. And you know what was so fucking mad as well? Like my you did ride, it away, my, man. my my rider is um is is not what I got. I got two bottles of white Bel Air, which mm. is what he fucking drunk, bro. Like, mm. and that was pure coincidence, bro. Mm. They brought them over, like, and I was like. That's what not mine. What the mine. fuck, bro? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, sure. Like and I, was, I was like, what is this fuck? So, like, just all these little things that happened, and I was like, wow. And it just felt, and that was before the set as well, so it mm. felt even more right. But it was fucking tough. I remember, I remember choking a lot of times when I got on the got on the mic. But at the same time, it felt like really fucking like powerful to like have the crowd like shouting his name and mm. fucking. Oh, it was beautiful, man. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think that was kind of like probably because you know what? I probably looked at him and thought, fuck me, bro. You got through. You done it. You done a really brave. Well. It's hard to say brave, but like I just know that. And do you know what one thing as well? What the medium said, which actually kind of gave me a bit of peace, is like I'm alright. I'm in a better place. Fuck it. I didn't have ADHD. I was bipolar. I was never gonna live a long life. That's what that's what she was saying that he was saying. Like, and again, it's like quite it, to hear it, and you think, oh, it's fuck. And uh, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's mad. I, I mean, I'm not really that. I'm not really that believable in that kind of stuff. I believe in energies, I believe in spirit stuff, but like that was like, I can't help but get something from that, man. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a big, you know when you see the white feathers on the floor, the mm, angel feathers yeah, in your yeah, head, yeah. I, mean, I always find them in random places, man. Yeah. And whether it, again, whether it's just something that you just hang on to, which is nice, like, I've got, every time I find one, I put one in, in like behind this, behind the picture or something. Mm. Do you know what as well, another story just comes to me quickly, like I fucking remember I was in a coffee shop, yeah, like not too long after we passed and like, it's one of the really quirky ones and it's got like a wall of books, like a fake wall of books. Like yeah. I remember seeing this note sticking outside of it, yeah, and I was like, what's that? And I picked it up and it's like, it said, so I can't what the fuck it said. It was something so relatable. It was like, you're going to be okay. I'm, be I'm, I'm, in, I'm better now or something. And I was like, what the fuck? This is like mad. And I remember showing it to my mum and she's like, what, that's mad. Like, so you, you do find these things in life that like give you signs like, and you, and you know what? Take them, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Take them, yeah, If yeah. it makes you feel better, bro, yeah, take, take them. them. Don't take fucking them. overthink them, brother. Yeah, like, don't overthink That was meant to be there for yeah, me, man. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You know, all these little things yeah, like, yeah. that's many be and, and that does it helps it makes it a little bit easier man just to yeah. just go do you know what he's fucking there bruv so yeah man it's been the hard it's definitely has been the hardest experience it's the hardest thing I've had to tell you in my life man 100% but um, like I say everything I do now is, is with him in mind mm. man it's crazy like I, I want to succeed even mm. more for him like yeah, it's yeah. mad like what, what I really found interesting I mean for those by the time this episode comes out your event that happened at Fabric maybe some time ago. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you, just to give you some context, is that um, since your brother's passing, you know, you set up this charity, yeah, yeah. which calls What's On Your Mind, which I'd, I'd seen... You see, you see the Manchester Yeah, I saw something yeah, about yeah, the Manchester yeah, yeah. thing. Somewhere I saw the Manchester yeah, thing. The and, I was like, that, yeah. and I saw it sometime after it happened, actually. And there was a young lady who was on the panel this time, who was in the crowd the last time, and oh, she yeah, was... Oh, yeah, talking about the, um, the, 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 the drug. The drug, the, yeah, the yeah, that's right. And I spoke with her and whatever. Ellie. But But I suppose the point... Ellie, that's it, yeah, yeah. And I suppose the point I'm making uh, and getting round to saying with that was that I came away from there... You know, like, I'm, 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 like listen, I'm not going to lie, you know what I mean? When I hear about uh, mental health and I hear about things like that, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I just don't know enough about I remember, it. I remember I don't when I even... missed you, I remember you, you were a bit like, oh, I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah, like, nah, I... bro, you're fucking, you're been this even time, bro. You got, you got stories, you got... I, I don't know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, but I left there, a couple of things. I personally left there empowered, See. but I also left there going, how can I help? Yeah, oh, bless you, man. Yeah, yeah. I left there going, I'm into this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This is like a new it's kind of... It's, it's a nice thing to be able to go to help. It feels good and like yeah. so like if even on yourself like sharing getting that off your chest like I know so many people said things they've never said before mm. in that room like and like I said I said to you off camera like that for me is the biggest like is one of the biggest proud, proud mm. feelings I've got of it that people feel comfortable right. to share in that in our environment in this yeah, environment yeah. we've created like yeah, that yeah, is absolutely. for me like everything and it seems to just be getting even the messages that get after it the people that turn up they're like oh mate I was so, we need more of this and it's true we fucking do and, that, and that, that's, that's for me is one of the, the main things that we're set on doing is doing these more of these events like and just raising awareness and who knows in a couple of years we could have yeah. thousands of people with potentially there or whatever. Yeah. I found as well that in, in many of the cases including obviously with your brother and whatever and the charity that yeah. came out from it is that I noticed that if 
you hadn't been through that trauma. This thing wouldn't nah, exist. Nah, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're really right, man. And it's the same with uh, this girl Emma as well. You know, like, I couldn't believe it. Oh, I, mate, I knew her, Emma. her story. What, what, is, that, is that one that's the, the body of moving? Yeah, that's right, Bruh, yeah. That, I, and I, it was just one thing after another. I messaged, I messaged her after I just to say to her, I, I didn't, know, I didn't know you'd been through that. Fucking hell, that, that was yet, mad. Yet, by her going through that, yeah. This thing has come out from yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and so by um, this thing being her like uh, body and movement yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 thing that now loads of people go to and and have benef benefited from. So there isn't really no, no, there is a loss, but there is a gain yeah, yeah. from this as well. Do you know what I mean? It's you kind know? of it's it's, it's, it's it's turning that pain into prosper. That's yeah, what I say, yeah, like, yeah. Pain yeah. into prosper by using that pain and going. Do you know what? I don't want this to happen to other people. Like, so I'm yeah. going to use my experience, my my um. Yeah, and, and my platform to to raise awareness for for mental health for other people, mm. seeing the signs, making it not as as alien as it is what yeah. it still is. Because like I say, there is so, there is so much more help out there now, and I, I see I see even see ITV. There's an advert every night now about in mental health. We should talk about stuff. Mm. But again, it's it's beautiful. But I still feel like there's um. Yeah, there's a lot of because because even last night like, when I, on Wednesday every time we do things, I, I, I'm like fucking hell. There's a service for that, or there's an mm. app for this. Yeah, yeah, fuck? yeah. Like, so I still so I'm, I'm I'm in the process now. I'm like, saying to my team like, we need to make like a fucking hub like of all these different brands. So exactly. Like, a yeah, Facebook yeah. group or yeah. Telegram. Where people but, can come. Yeah, yeah, and go, yeah, yeah. And go in there and then and then you've got everyone in yeah. there for all their resources. Yeah, like, absolutely. Need, like. I mean, that's kind of like I think you might remember that. That's kind of a question that I asked after I'd already spoken. Yeah, you did, which yeah. was like. Going. Oh, you did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is said, like, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, like, this is great. You know what I mean? Like, so, 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 what happened? And and it, actually, before I go down that route, one of the questions what I want to ask you before I go any further is that you said about your, when we're speaking about your brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you spoke about your brother, and you spoke about your parents, and you spoke about how you were trying to manage that, yeah. yeah. And you're trying to, you knew that this was happening, uh, that he had his challenges. As a, as a family, you were trying to work it out as a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything that you could advise post <sighs> what's happened? Do, do you know what, mate? It's so simple, bro. But like, bro, like we all know when someone's not, when someone's might be a bit iffy or not, or you're feeling, mm, he doesn't look right. Just fucking ask him, man. Just go mm. and chat to him. Pull him aside. Don't have to do it in front of everyone. Just put him. Are you all right, bro? Is everything all right? Like, mm. do you know what I mean, I mean, it was sympathetic. Do you, want, do you want to have a coffee and then maybe open the conversation? Like, mm. some people, some people, a lot of people are embarrassed to, to admit. They feel the way they do. That's what it is. They're embarrassed. To, they don't want to put. That's what they say. They don't, they don't want to put. Oh, I don't want to put you put any more shit on your plate, man. Like that's they try and deflect it all the time, or try and mm. pretend that they're okay when they're not. And that alone must be such a facade to try and keep up with. Mm. Trying to energy draining. Like my, my, his missus used to tell me like when they used to finish work and get home, he was just a fucking like just like. Just, a, just, just, yeah, just, just took it out of him because he all day he's trying to, he's a barber. He's like, yeah, everything's all right, mate. Mm -hmm. I mean, trying to be all positive and, and active and that. And it's like. Yeah, it's 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 a facade. So for me, bro, it's, it's so simple, man. Just 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 check on people, man. If you haven't heard from your mate in a while, if he's moving a bit booky, if he's not been online or whatever it is, like, yeah, just just hit him up, man. Don't think, oh fuck him, he's not he's not fucking getting in touch with me. He must not like me anymore. Actually, there must be a reason for that, bro. Be the bigger man and go. You know, what? are you okay? Are you okay? I'm here for you. And then even that, that's what opens up potentially. Oh, do you know what? Actually, I could do with a fucking friend to talk to. And then the branch gets held. So mm -hmm. for me, that is the one thing that I wish I hit. Which I was more observant of, like rather than going, oh, he's in a bit of a mood today. Fucking, hell, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go near him. Fucking go near him and actually ask, man. That's that's mm. like that's something I definitely learn. And it's such a simple thing, but we, I think we all, we've all, we all, we all, we all know when someone's not hundred percent. Whether it's your missus or fucking a mate or even a work colleague, like you can feel that they're being a bit aggy or a bit. But we just, we normally just feel away from that because we don't want that energy. Like, yeah, you know no, what? it's true. It's, it's true. So that's true, just the realness, man. man. It's a real truth. It's, it's true. But you're like, you know what? I've He's doing his thing. Uh, yeah, I've been there as well. Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I mean? Because I've you're been like, that guy. You know, I've got quite a lot going on. Like, I don't really want to, I don't really want really to get involved in that. Like, and it's like, nah, that's, that's need to flip it around mm. and go, bruv, you know, if you do get involved in, and help him out, then mm. not only your energy is going to be better, bruv, but you've done something really fucking good. Like, and like I say, we had a couple messages, I think you've seen in the group, people saying, oh, when I come to your event last year, like I was, oh no, sorry, he made messages, he messes the um, the Instagram actually, and we have like a team there if anyone's in crisis that can contact him mm. straight away, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we we did, we got someone to contact him, and he messaged messaged uh, Grace, I think, or Dale after saying, 
oh mate, oh, if I didn't go to that, if I didn't get that phone call, I was Very really thinking about it, this man. Morning. I was like, yeah, fucking yeah. hell, man. So, like I said, to save one life is... Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Well, I saw it's, that it's, message. We were doing something right, man. So, yeah, it, it feels good. But the, like I say, the, the main thing is just talking, man. And, and these these things here, like, like seeing seeing people that like I've known for years that but not known their life, bro. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Not know, know fucking anything about Shabbos, like past, or like same with Shot. I've known him for years, them guys. Like, mm. So, like, to hear them being vulnerable and open up about their kind of... Uh, Everyone, everyone open up about their story. You, you kind of feel connected even more in that room. You kind of like, you kind of like, I don't know. Like everyone's so, um, I don't know, man. It's like it's a like good, good energy in the room, and everyone feels. It. And then you're almost like putting that out there when we when we finally put it out, like. That, that that's that hopefully breaks the fucking stigma. Like, ho hopefully, so many people watch. They go, fucking, hell, I'm going through that, or fucking. Yeah, that's hell, the that entire that, idea, yeah. man. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. To go, fuck, see, look, he's going through all this, and he's still doing this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that's you it, can that, do it yeah, as well, yeah, bro. Exactly. Like, and, 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 yeah, that, that's yeah. that's the main the, the the main point of call with this man to try and get yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely, and, absolutely. And if we if we're kind of like if we're looked up to by certain people, we've got pu public, we've got profiles, we've got followers, then if we're pushing it out and making it normal, bro, yeah, like, yeah, to talk about these things, yeah. then yeah. that's when it'll be fucking a lot more normalised, hopefully, like, yeah, in general. But I think, probably. I feel like we have a, we have a, a duty, man, for, to do good with what we've got. And I think that th th this, for me, is uh, something I feel very passionate about. And it seems like everyone else does as well. So yeah. it's like, there's a gap in the market, in ours anyway, for like, for, for these kind of events, man. And mm. I just I just feel like, yeah, man, I feel like um, um, they, they are really doing good. I walked away from that feeling really fucking proud of, proud of us, uh, yeah, of yeah. everyone. Everyone's been involved, the way, the way it kind of uh, come about. Like, we only had a week's notice to do it, so very well, I'll say a week's notice. We had some problems beforehand, but yeah, I was really anxious, like I said, off camera to you, like, fuck, if it's going to be, is anyone going to turn up? We've only got a week to promote it. Oh, should we put it back? I mean, I, my team was like, nah, we've got this. And to be fair, they did, so yeah, yeah. it was a really good event, man, really good turnout, so yeah. No, it was, it no, was... well done, brother, well Thank done. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. Again, thanks for coming down, man. Yeah, I've got to rate you, bro. Go get you involved, boy. You said you want to help, man. Get you, get you involved, little yeah. ambassador, man. But you got my number, man, <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean? Now, this is not lip service. <laughs> Phone me. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, <laughs> I mean, definitely, man. Phone me, man, run and be there, Yeah, Jesse. bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, man. I'd love to, man, yeah. I'd love to. And like I say, it's, it's, um, it's a new area for me. Yeah. Like, you know, like... And you get, like I say, you get, you, like, it's like anything, it's like, it's even, even going back to when I used to teach, like, you, mm. you're, you, it's, it's a really good feeling you're getting from someone going, oh my God, mm. like, when you could tell, you do that one little thing that's like, oh my God, that's how you do that. Or, mm. and same with this, like, you're unlocking, like, people's thought process a bit more in their heads, like, and, and you're just, you're just doing good. And it's yeah. like, I mean, it's, it's a, it is a beautiful you get, you thing, get, you, get, you, get, you get a good feeling in the back, man. So, yeah, yeah man, it's, 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 yeah. So, so Frank, you know, I know we've spoken about that, and I know, um, you know, I don't want to jump and change and whatever, but but I am very interested actually in this boxing thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> right, yo, right, yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah, because so I saw, I, I saw a couple of things with boxing. I, I think. You were the second person. I was like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> and before that, I saw... I didn't know Ray Keith. He, he, he won't yeah, be. Yeah, but Yeah, yeah, Ray. I, I, yeah, I yeah, does it as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. So tell me, what's going on, man? So, yeah, above, you know what? Like, I just I just got into... My friend was... Um, was training with someone um, and just, just he's, he's basically got a ring in he's got a ring in his back garden. It's not massive, but like he just did little boxing. And I was like, you know what? I, I like I like high intensity training. I don't like just going to the gym and just doing. I like to fucking sweat. I like mm. to push myself. Like I used to do a thing called grit, which is like thirty minutes of fucking hell. Like, mm. but I used to love it. Like it's like army kind of drill shit. Like. Mm. So that the boxing thing was like, okay, let me see what this is about. It got, it kind of intrigued me. I just went for a couple of lessons. I got really into it, and then they literally like my dad rang me. He's like, do you want to fight? And I was thinking, fucking hell, dad, I've been doing it for two weeks. Like I didn't yeah, really think yeah, I was yeah. even. Gonna, I was just doing it for fucking hobby. I didn't yeah, think yeah, I was gonna, yeah. And then, and, then, and then my mate was like, yeah, I'm gonna do. I might fight. I might do that as well. And I was thinking, oh shit. So then it started getting in my head, and I was like, thinking, fucking hell. And it was for Fabio as well because the night was gonna be. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it. And then next thing you know, I'm fucking training for a fight. And that was like, I started boxing. Well, I started training. In, in, uh, I think September um, last year, so probably about nearly a year, well, it's over a year ago, and that was just fun. And then, then, then yeah, when it got into the the right, we're, we're going to be fighting now. Well, that's when the training kind of upped a bit, and that's when I had to literally be in the ring. When I, when I, I was quite, I was quite anxious about being in the ring with someone and actually punching people because I, I I was training with my mate as well. <laughs> punching a bag. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit different, bro. Yeah, 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 because he punches back. Yeah, 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 bro, yeah. And you know what, like, me and my mate, we, we, we did, like, we, we did, um... 
<laughs> we we do it on each other, and he and, and our trainer would watch. And but I, I just I couldn't get full hundred percent because I was like, "You're my mate, brother." And then it's like he hit me. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, oh, it is, and yeah. And he suddenly starts fucking you in again. But like, I just felt this kind of like it just felt weird to like hit my to to um punch my mate, brother. It yeah, felt yeah. weird. It's a weird weird dynamic. I'm not I'm not really a conversational person anyway, yeah. so it felt weird. But yeah, get, getting through that and fucking the training, and I really took it seriously, man. In January, I stopped drinking and everything. I was like, right, I'm gonna get in shape. I had to get from like I was like ninety. 98 kg, and I had to fight at 72, I think, wow, or 78. Lot, man. Yeah, man, drop. I fucking went in, bruv. That's me. a big drop, so, man. so my mate, who I was training with, he's a nutritionist, so he yeah. really helped me, bruv, like, uh, on, um, uh, yeah, just understanding the food. Because I was like, why are you not losing weight? I'm, I'm only eating once a day. Like, yeah, but it's like you're eating the wrong time, you're eating the wrong things. Like, da -da -da -da, you need to eat before you train. All these, all these, he just basically gave me a whole lesson on food. He had his app that he's got and he fucking, uh, yeah, it really helped me. I had to eat four meals a day. Like, I mean, it was quite repetitive. And, but because I had the goal in sight and I was seeing it working after the first two weeks, I was like, yo, the weight's actually coming off. Like, yeah. I was like, fuck it, I'm in and I'm doing it. And I was training hard and, in between this, obviously, I'm still doing my shit. I, I had to go to Australia for fucking three, a month as well in between this. Like, just when we started, that was about two months before the fight. So I was mm. like, oh. So I brought my pads out there with me. Yeah, yeah, kept and, the and, discipline. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually yeah. done a couple of boxing classes out there as well. Um, the one thing that I found the hardest for me was, like, actually the sparring. Like, initially, the thought of, like... Because I remember doing, like, 12 rounds with my mate... Um, and we did have a head guard on as well. And I was fucked after it, bruv. Like, I felt like broken. My ribs were hurting. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back in there again. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, man. Like, and it took me a while to pluck up the courage to go back in again because I was like, I don't want to fucking, I didn't like feeling like that, man. Like, mm. I felt battered. I had black eyed, my ribs were hurting. Like, I was fucking broken, man. Like, All right, we should come training next week. Uh, like... I'm going to Australia. <laughs> what else next month? I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, after, after that, I got a head guard anyway. I got a head guard after that because I was a bit, a bit more, a bit like, like we're going to use a head guard for the fight. So yeah, yeah, I might as well fuck Because I just, probably it's just day, brother. I said, listen, it's, it's not my profession. This is like just something I'm just doing for my brother. I don't want to fucking walk out with no ear. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pop yeah. Eardrum or something. Yeah, like. yeah. So I just thought, let me protect myself a bit more. And um, yeah, man, I just threw myself into it. I had just some mad injuries as well, man. I, I really fucked my back up, like literally a month before the fight, man. I thought I was going to have to call it off. And I really, I pulled my back by, I think I just didn't stretch enough. And I did, I remember doing, doing the gym, pulled the back thing. And I was like, oh. And then from then, I, I mean, I, I couldn't even walk, man. It was fucked, man. It was really bad. Yeah, I had, like, spine I, or muscle? It was muscle, yeah, muscle, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had like, um, uh, cryotherapy, I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That fucking really helped. But I was really struggling. I couldn't train for like a month. So like, I didn't really start training until about three weeks before, the, like properly again, until about three weeks before the fight. And I was mm. like, fucking hell, this is mad. But my my, uh, my trainer was like, bro, sometimes you, if you peak too early, then you str it's struggle to keep up. Because you've had this little moment out, now you know you've got to give it your fucking all. You mm. have. And he was like, bro, you look fucking... By the you, time you get to that point, yeah, you're, you're, you're at, at your peak, peak man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did. Yeah. On the night, on the day, on the night, I felt fucking ready, bro. Mm. I was so mm. focused. I was meditating. I was doing fucking spinal breathing. I was doing everything. Mm. I was proper mm. in it. I was really in visualising every fucking day. Every day. I do this Wim Hof breathing thing every morning. Yeah, yeah. Every, every morning I was visualising, like, knocking him out and fucking how I was going to do it and everything. and Just really, like, believing it. Like, And then, yeah, on the day, fucking... Yeah, man, I just I just felt ready, bro. It, it, I wouldn't even say oh, nervous is quite a hard thing. I was no, I think I was ha excited, nervous, but I just felt ready. It's the best way I could put it. I was just fucking in the zone. I was like, let's fucking go. Even coming out, so I don't know if you've seen. I'll send you the fight. I've got the yeah, send thing, it to me. I yeah, fucking yeah. feel like I'm Rocky Balboa and I'm coming out. I'm like doing all this shit like a twat, but I, I was just really in it. I had all my friends, family, were all there. My mum, my everyone. It was just such a, and it was all for Fabio. Like just everything was just. I had my sisters walk out with me next to me, and they had a picture of him like mm. either side. It was just beautiful, bro. And I literally, I just knew what time it was. I was like, right, let's go. And I remember, like, it was free. It was close, like, but I definitely took it, man. And uh, mm. I remember this, uh, the, the second round, he, he got me right at the end. Yeah, and I remember, like, seeing a bit of, see, a, bit of a wobble. And I was yeah, like, yeah. but he didn't follow it up. So I had right, a bit of time yeah, to yeah, recover. He, and the yeah. bell went. And I was yeah. like, well, Lucky, the fucking yeah, last yeah, round, yeah, yeah. bro. I, I think the one thing my corner said is, bruv, you listen to us. Like, a lot of people in their first fight, they just fucking do the whipbill tick. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. actually listen to us, like, and, and you fucking won because of it, man. Yeah, and, that, yeah. and you, you, you know what I mean? And that's, that's why it felt amazing, bruv. Like, when that fucking arm got raised at the end, bruv, yeah, yeah. oh my days. <laughs> such an emotional like 
that whole journey, like, oh, it's just so fucking mm. so emotional. Windmill, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> a lot of men do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to see yeah, that. Yeah, I've said it probably. It was, it was cold, yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously winning that was just fucking everything to me, man. Like, well, I had my mum there well, and, well and everyone it was, was just fucking. And since then, I've just carried it on, brother. Mm. Carried on. I'm not going to lie, but I'll say this on camera, but Icy Freeze called me out a couple of times, brother. So, oh, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I think we're going we're gonna to do something. Right, if, if that's going to go down, I want to be there. Yeah, but I'll we're going to do like a little charity. Yeah, 100%. We'll do like a thing of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep me in the loop about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think it's definitely. We'll keep, film keep that. We'll keep, film yeah, that. yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll yeah, properly yeah. Make film sure it's that. recording though, yeah? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll film that and record it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I've, and I've kept it ever since, man. I, I haven't spied in quite, a, in quite a while just because of my schedule, really. But um, I, I've, um, yeah, I, I, every time I go to the gym now, I, I, there's bags in there and I, I'll always do... I'm skipping. Skipping took me ages to get the knack of it, but now I fucking I can do the little do it, yeah. the hop thing and everything. I was like, yo. So I do that, I do a minute of that, and I do I do three like three or three to five rounds of the bag. Like every time I just I just love it. I just really fucking love it. So now it's literally part of my daily routine, right, bro. Okay. Every time I go to the gym, I, yeah. I'll do boxing, man. And it's like, yeah, that that's all been from that. And I think the way I've connected with it so much is because it just it just humbles me. It's just you in the bag for a second, you're just fucking. It's like the same when you're like running or Doing any any kind of high intensity sport where you, you you're, you're feeling fucked and you have to carry on, like you, that's when your vision goes ooh, and you're just there. You're not thinking about all them shitty things. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I've got to survive. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing I say. When, when the bell went, because I was not gonna lie, I looked in before. I was like, ah, bro, this is gonna be. You don't look that fucking good. Yeah. And then when when it got to the fucking actual like when you hold the gloves and you look into each other's eyes, I was like, bro, now nah, he's fucking ready. Like I see in his eyes, he's like, I was like, right, let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah. I literally just, yeah, I remember just like, it just, it feeling like it went so quick, but, like, but also felt the rounds felt really long. Mm. Like it's mad how fucked you get from it, man. Like the end of it, I'm mad how, from like, they're only like, fucking what, one and a half minute rounds or something, like three one and a half minute rounds. You are fucked at the end of it, bro. I don't know where it goes, but yeah. you just absolutely fucked. And I remember like afterwards, like, I don't know why I chose to smoke a cigarette as soon as I come out like a twat, but yeah. the guy was like, bro, be careful, it's gonna, it's gonna properly taste rough. And I was like, whatever, bro. And he's like, fuck it, like, mate, it was fucked. I was like, fuck, nah, yeah, 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 it fucked up. I was like, but I remember, I remember after I was in the shower, getting, like, getting, getting, uh, having a shower after, I was just like, I did it, man, I fucking did it. So for me, it was like, that, that was probably one of the, one of the best feelings I've had in my life, to be honest with you. Like having my family around me, just to fucking let, I like, feel like a boxer for the night as well, because it's a proper sick event, man. It was yeah. like fucking, Couple thousand people there. It was it was it was Fantastic. it was big. So and the crowd were there. Were, a lot of them knew knew why I was there, yeah. knew what I was doing, and it just fucking felt so sick, man, mm. to have the arm raised at the end. I I, I would have really struggled to process it if I lost, bro. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I ever would. It was so in my head, bro. I would have done I done everything I physically could to lot to to win, and it was close. But I definitely had him in the first and third round, and I think the third round the third round was the was the was the clincher for me. But mm. it's jokes because you can see when he raises his hand, the other guy thinks he's won. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was sick, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm, again, if anyone's going through shit, bro, just do it. Do a sport, man. Do yeah, a, do yeah, exercise yeah. or do something you'll find that, for me, humbles me, man. It's not many things that, that, that can, but exercise, high intensity exercise, when you can't think about anything else but survival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's that, and I think that's why again in the boxing ring, like when you actually deep it, it's like bro, it's you against another guy. It's basically fights to death. It's like primal, yeah, yeah, primal, like primal, yeah, yeah, primal yeah, fucking like instincts from back yeah, in the day. Like, yeah. It's like you against this guy. One of you's winning, bro. One yeah. of you's dying. Like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. So. Yeah. You got a fucking. That's the thing with boxing. Like, it's not. It's so many. It's so. It's such a technical sport. Like, which mm. I, I probably appreciate even more now because I, I know it. Like, but it's like, bruv, Like, it's not only the fucking the punches. You got to guard. You got to faint. You got to move around. Mm. You got to fucking. You got to breathe right. Well, even that's fucking like you got. I was told to breathe through my nose, which is fucking hard when you're blowing out, man. Mm, mm. And then you're just snotting everywhere. And it's like, mm, it's, probably, it's, 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 it's mad. So, so many different things, like, and then also the stamina as well and their fitness. You know what I mean? Like, going through rounds, it's all, it's all good until you get whacked. When you get whacked, bro, your game plan's out the fucking window, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like you got to then adjust to that and fucking, mm. it's, but yeah, I just love all of that of it. Like, I love the tactical, the thinking. It's just a really good. Thing for the brain, brain think, yeah, yeah imagine. You get, you so have, many things you're yeah, going to be doing exactly. at the same time. And it's like calculations. Yeah, it's, you're it's, do it's it. mad. I can't lie, man. It's, it's mad. When I first, I was like, what, I've got to do that as well? Like, fuck. Yeah. Like, but then when you suddenly, when and you're then, in like it, you say, you might be calculating, damn, then bang, yeah, you get yeah, a punch yeah. in the face. And it's like, that's what I'm saying. Bang, and it's like, oh shit, hold on, no, 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 yeah, I haven't worked yeah, it out yeah, yet. Yeah, 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 I haven't worked out Exactly, exactly. That's the thing, you, if you're like, right, I'm going to I'm gonna catch his punch, and you're waiting, okay, he's, he's, he's through the other hand, okay, and then you, you wait too long, and, and you think about it too much, the thing that he
like, bless my cousin who had a fight earlier in the night and he, he didn't win, unfortunately, but he just didn't give it his all. We said to him after, but I could see, oh, bless his fucking heart. He was so, he was so distraught because obviously he was doing it for Fabio and that. Mm. And I, I really, fully hear that, man. Like, mm. I spoke to him bare times about it and just said, bruv, like, what, even stepping in the ring, bruv, yeah, you've course, done yeah, the fucking, of course. you've done yeah, yeah, proud, on. bro. He did more than, 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 than other, some other yeah, people have exactly, done. You got exactly. into the ring. I fully get him. If I'd have lost, bruv, yeah. I would have been a fucking mess. I'd have yeah. like a failure. And it's shit because we're not, mm, but like no, it, no, it's, no. It, because of the, the, the occasion and the mm, night. Mm. Yeah, it would it would have been horrible, man. But um, but you won. Yeah, I won. <laughs> you won. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, it's fucking yeah. beautiful, man. Yeah, I was fucking amazing, yeah. mate. So yeah, I've done it. I've done it ever since then, man. Really, I, I think I will continue to do it, like. Um, well, I, I want to yeah. see that. I want to see that bout. I <laughs> yeah, want to see man. that IC3. Oh, I just got to drop some weight or I'm going to put on some yeah, weight, basically. Yeah. I want to wanna see that. <laughs> I want to see that fight. That'd be, that'd that'd be, be, like, sick, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. I can't wait. Hilarious. To watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, not, not the word I was looking for, <laughs> no, man. No, no, that's the word I'm saying, bro. <laughs> that is going to be you know. And I bet you any money, all of the men that are watching this right now, yeah, 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 you yeah. know what I'm talking about. I'm down, bro. Yeah, fucking hell. Still chill. Listen, man. We're coming to the end of the yeah, cool, conversation man. that but I'd like to kind of just gauge kind of like your thoughts on like um two things actually very different but nevertheless um equally important I think you know what I mean um one um where is the charity going and what can you kind of like share with us so yeah, that sure. I can that so we can help and support yeah, of course, the charity man, yeah. And then after that, do you know what I mean? Basically, you know, what does the next sort of like three, six months to a year oh God, and God. beyond hold for... Well, let's go to the charity first. Yeah, so let's go to that. Charities, yeah. it's on your mind. It's what's on your mind. On Instagram, it's on your mind. You can see it. Like, it's got like a head. And, and, and we'll have the to... details in yeah, there. Yeah, in yeah, the, yeah. In we, we have got a GoFundMe, so you can obviously donate to charity. Um, but yeah, we're, we're planning just to kind of keep it moving. We do, we, we've got another event in, in February. And um, yeah, we're going to do an annual event every year and hopefully more. Like, it, it's, it's all, it, it's literally all is... Dependent on uh, yeah, the people wanting to get involved and how much how much um, yearning there is for it, and I think there really there is, is, man. Yeah, so like, of course there and, is. and it, I can see it from the other night for a week's night. If we had a month, bro, we could have probably done a, a fucking thousand potentially. So it's like, for me, what we're doing, we're just going to keep growing it. We want to be the the number one mental health charity for especially for music and and and. And I want to say men, it's for music, man, like music. It's not mm. just for men, it's for a anyone that's struggling. Like, And we want to have that network in place, like you said, like with all these like brands and businesses and, and, and great people that have these these kind of niche businesses to specialise, especially for mental health or for music mental health. Like, I want to have a hub where people can literally just, yeah, man, go there and say, this is, this is oh, I'm struggling with this. And then people just point them at, okay, I'm going to help you with this. Yeah. I just want to have, that's, that for me would be great. If we had some kind of group, some kind of goal, some kind of, sorry, group or, or some kind of app or something where people could literally just go on and find yeah. the resources there. And all the resources are there. Or even just ask, I'm struggling with this and get, Get some response, man. But um, yeah, man, for, for something that's all been born for my brother, like I know he'd be looking down proud. So um, yeah, yeah we're gonna keep keep striving yeah, for yeah. greatness, man. Yeah. Like I said, I can't thank everyone enough for supporting it and being involved. Like like it's it's for me, it's magical, man. Like yeah. to have so many people like want to share, want to come along. Like artists, peers, I've looked up to for years. Fucking, I mean, so many so many good things have, have come from it and. Yeah, man, I'm just, we're going to keep striving for greatness. So yeah, fantastic, for the sport, man. fantastic. I mean, we spoke earlier how how refreshing it was to hit to see how excited you were about <laughs> like how you came through. You know what oh I mean? God, you ready for this next three months? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you came through and you kind of like, I was like, that's nice, man, <laughs> <laughs> because it is. Yeah, man. It's like it's nice to hear. You see people have uh, successful careers and what have you and. Um, and you know they must be enjoying themselves, but it's nice to hear it. Yeah, definitely. It's nice man. to hear, like, yeah, because yeah. then that happened, yeah, then that yeah, happened, yeah, yeah, then yeah, that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then flipping it, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> then this, it's like, it's nice to hear, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, that's so, what I'm saying. It's, I think it's good as well to portray that, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, the gas never goes, man. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's genuine. I do. Yeah, you know what I mean? I love it. You know what I mean? I do love it. I love it, you know? Especially the fact that you designed this. You didn't, it was not like, you know, mine was just like, this is not going to be on camera, but. Mine wasn't like, uh, yeah, you know what, this is a business. Yeah, yeah. Just, you yeah, know, like, yeah, this you. would be great. <laughs> what am I going to do? First I'm going to do this. I was just like, what the fuck? What do you mean? I got paid, yeah? Where else, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? I but, you, um, but yeah, so so what that, what is the next kind of like three months looking free? Well, the, the main what, thing. What, I've... In fact, what is what's going on for turn turn on well, the, 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 the main thing that I've been working on for the last two years is 
is is my uh, my show called Game Time, which is like so. Oh, Wolf told me about yeah, that, yeah. but I didn't get it. So yeah. you tell me. Yeah, okay, cool. So basically, yeah. it's an audio visual show. Like, um, but it's uh, the concept behind it is it's it's basically a lot of my childhood kind of like. Uh, influences I guess man like it's got a lot of kind of like old gaming kind of like I've got a Super Mario kind of skit in there I've got yeah. like a, a, a I'll show you after off camera they look fucking sick they basically remade me into like an avatar and, and they put me into Mortal Kombat which looks fucking right cool. yeah they put me into like did this Pac-Man thing getting chased by a Pac-Man it actually looks like me it's mad like they've right. done yeah. Uh, and yeah so basically the, the show would have been done by this time this goes out anyway but yeah the, the, whole pro, the whole kind of concept of it is is like that, like, I start by walking into an arcade and then I, there's an arcade machine at the end that is mm. like literally calling to me. I walk over to it and I get sucked into it. Yes. And I kind of go through different worlds. Yes. I land at the bottom and then fucking I've got, all, I'm like in this gaming world and all these things start getting switched on and then then it starts getting intensified. And then throughout the set, there'll be moments where, where because I'm in this gaming world, I, I get, I get transferred into it and someone else is like another game, so Mortal Kombat, Super Mario, and I'm that character in the game. So I've met, I've got these visuals to, and I've made tunes to go along with the visuals, mm. like yeah, and it literally tells a story and there's, there's, there's an outro, there's an ending to it and everything. So it's a full story like it, within the set, like go on, go on, go on. And it's got a, yeah, it's basically audio visual, uh, sorry, visuals that I've got basically um, bespokely made for the whole show. Like. So you're going to be DJing and this is going to be showing behind yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be DJing. I'm going to have to watch. So that's on the 11th, right? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we're getting it all recorded as well. Like, okay. We've got some really fucking special guests. Like, I've got, hopefully got um, what I have. I mean, I don't, I don't want to fucking jinx it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dizzy Rascal. I've done a tune with Dizzy Rascal and Jamie and D-Double. It's not drum and bass. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, coming yeah, out yeah. his album. I've done okay. two tunes for his album. And I, I kind of said, bro, what are you saying? Do you want to come and perform this song? Yeah, that'd be it? sick. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. he said, yeah. yeah. So if all three of them come out during the thing, uh, during yeah. the set, that'd be amazing. Is so, it on the set? They're all three on the same track? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, mad, that's mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah, they're yeah. going to come out, hopefully, and, and, and slay that. And yeah, like, I've got a lot like, a lot of visuals as well, because I've, I've got a lot of tunes with drips and a lot of tunes with vocal vocalists. Mm, like, mm. We have got like the, the lyrics made up onto the screen as well, so it kind of it's in time with the yeah, actual... Yeah. So yeah. Even just cur creating a show, like in the sense of, like, after, like, I've got... I've got to choose the lighting, how intensify, what visuals to use where. Like, and I've been proper hands on with it. So when we've been in rehearsals and stuff, like I've been saying, now you just want with this one. And it's it's just nice to actually have like a like more of a show. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, it sounds like it's a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It that's, is a that's, show. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what it is. And I've got, yeah, man, I just can't wait to do it. I've been planning it for so fucking long and yeah. I can't wait to show it to the world. And what better place to do it at drum, a sold out drum shed? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, playing, I think I'm doing eight till nine before Andy C. Like, so it's yeah, like yeah. perfect timing yeah, just yeah. to showcase this thing. And yeah, man, I'm just, I just I'll be can't there, wait. man. Don't you worry about that, brother. I'll be there, man. Just can't wait to see what happens after. We've got loads of things planned after for this, but mm. this moment, this is so important because like it feels like I'm just fucking ready to take mm. my career to the next, the next level and and just like have like a show that's like properly like my story. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Like, it's, it's not set anymore. It's a show. Like, and obviously we, yeah, we've got a lot of plans after it. But like I say, everything's on this night because like all the content we get from it. This, this, this is this is the best stage to show it at. Yeah. Like to fully sold out. There's a 68 meter screen as well, so we can we can properly show off the visuals in all that's the glory. That's gonna be incredible. I'm it's gonna be at the front. I'm, yeah. When I say at the front, I'm not gonna be backstage no, you when that's it. on. Yeah, you want to see I want to see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I want to see that. I want to see it live and then I watch the video yeah, after. Yeah, so I can't, I can't fucking wait, mate. Literally, mm. it's, it's like the moment I've been waiting for for so long. Yeah. It's like, so, I, it was like, so I can imagine that means then for you that that's kind of like, when I said like, what's the next thing and da da da, blah, 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 that really is a catalyst for stuff that's going to happen. Yeah, exactly, after. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what, that, the, the, the potential off the back of this is crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. And we, mm. we obviously, we've obviously pitched it to a number of promoters and, 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 and markets around the world and they're all really excited. So yeah. now it's about getting the content ready, getting, making sure the show blows, there's no fucking, no mistakes or, or, or yeah, and then, and then using that content to sell the show around the world. So I'm really, really, really fucking uh, excited. Alongside that as well, I mean, I've got, I've got music out. Uh, I'm working, I'm working still with, with EMI and um, a couple other major labels to kind of get some other tracks out after mm. the, uh, off off the back of the success of Rave Out. So yeah, like yeah, do you know what I mean? I, I'm just loving the whole kind of like yin and the yang of like Turno, who's obviously everyone knows me for for like making jump up or mm. feel for whatever you call it. And then you've got like, the other side of me who, who kind of makes the more kind of, well, I would say more, more lighter, soulful kind of commercially kind of stuff. It's got that in my locker as well. So I, I really like that because I think it's like, for me, it keeps me excited all the time. I'm not just doing the same thing all the time, yeah, yeah, jumping between yeah. pools. And yeah, I really yeah, yeah. enjoy well doing done. it all. And yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I actually learn, learn something from both kind of yeah. sides. And I can bring that into, into both sides of the genres.
Well, bruv, I look forward to um, to Saturday. Yeah. Right, I look forward to next Saturday. That's going to be a good laugh. Thanks for joining us today. Right, yeah, pleasure, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been like a really uh, contrasting... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we spoke about quite a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. In, yeah. De in depth, I just had like a little flashback of some of the yeah, things you spoke yeah, about, man. Right. It's like yeah, been yeah. A, lot of, a lot of stuff. But bruv, to be honest, man, it's been a pleasure, man. I've been, yeah. I've been, a, you've been, you've been a, a big, like, I don't know, man, honourable peer for fucking years, man. Oh, so I appreciate actually, like, that, man. Be invited on your show and to uh, connect with you and to tell... So I don't speak about my life like yeah the yeah I really appreciate therapist that. run over here man <laughs> <laughs> don't call us <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, respect man thank you my bro man respect bro sick okay wicked that's a wrap man that's a wrap.